Hello and welcome to Q&A Friday. Q&A Friday. Q&A Friday. Q&A Friday. Friday. Yeah, maybe that doesn't work. Try another jingle next week. So, welcome Q and A Friday. My name is Jason Newland. This is Let Me Bore You to Sleep. And please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. Couple of notices. Um, first of all, I would like to. Say so a big thank you to Jennifer for your PayPal gift, for your kind PayPal gift. Thank you. Received that at 29 parts midnight, whence I was in bed. Thank you very much. Very much appreciated. Secondly, I am recording this on Saturday. But I will also release it today. So it's sometime, you know... So most for most of the Saturday, the Friday Q and A Fridays, I've released them Saturday morning. But on this occasion, it's going to be later because it's now nine forty nine in the morning on Saturday, the nineteenth of October. And there's a very good reason for this, but uh, it's just personal stuff. I got a. I was helping a a neighbour out, so I didn't, um, that's not the only reason to be fair, but yeah, after that I just couldn't, like, didn't have the energy to do it, but it's fine, I'll do it today, plus, oh, I'm get, I'm not, okay, I'm not now, but I was behind with my Open University degree course behind <laughs> like a week behind and now I'm up to date the the next week starts today and I ended the last week last night so I now am up to date but yeah it's opened up a few uh, little issues for me. <clears throat> In fact, I was considering leaving the course. But I decided, this was yesterday, probably afternoon, and I thought, well, instead of doing what I normally do, or what I have done in the past, and gone with that energy, I'll wait until Monday. You know, think it over during the weekend. And there's some reason I thought I was further behind than I was. And I don't know. I mean, I'll talk about this a little bit more because I think one of the questions asks me about the the course. But yeah, I was just, well, I'll be honest, I struggled. I'm struggling a little bit with it. And I think that's kind of normal, to be fair. Um, well, it's normal for me, anyway. I don't know if it's normal for other people. But... Mm, that's probably a different recording. But yeah, I'll talk about that maybe a bit more in the future. But right now, it's Q&A Friday, and I've got, I think, 11 questions. So I've got a lot of questions to answer. Oh, oh. Itchy back, itchy back. Oh, it's raining. I've just literally took him out. And he's now cleaning himself off because he's probably got mud all over him. It's raining, man. It's raining. And he's not going out again till Monday. I'll have to, even if I just have to hold him out the window so he can go to the toilet. 
that way. I tell you, I just, <laughs> just, I don't want to go out in it. I don't. I'm not a fan of the rain. I'm not, I'm a fan of the rain because, you know, if it wasn't for the rain, we'd all be dead. But, you know, I, I do, I just don't like being in it. You know? I don't like being in it. That, that's kind of, that's it really. I don't think there's anything else to update you on. Yeah, just yesterday was a bit, uh, I'll be the last, the last weeks have been a bit, uh, at times, in every day, you know, it's just, it comes and goes, but, uh, it's, it's time consuming, and it's more time consuming than I gave it credit for, that I, I didn't really think about, you know, 16 to 18 hours a week, Oh, that's not much, but actually it is quite a lot. It is quite a lot, and it is quite a lot. <laughs> I keep repeating it. A anyway, I think I cover this. I think I'll be covering this information in one of the questions. I keep interrupting myself today. I've banged the microphone, and then I turned my phone on, and a video started, so I need to be a bit more focused. That's another thing. F focused, baby. That's something I'm like, need to be doing. Oh yeah, uh, Molly. Molly the boss is, had her, had her operation. And on her profile, there's a picture of her in bed. Um, in the hospital bed. And she's on her way to recovery, so sending well wishes to Auntie Molly. Right, here we go. Also did a poll this week. It's a day ago, one day ago. Please let me know if you'd like me to do regular weekly Whisper Wednesdays. And I've had 26 votes so far, the yeses have been six, the noes have been 16. The ambivalent, which someone added, has been four. And the I told you before, don't interrupt me when I'm on the toilet, grrr, has had none. I'm adding mine for that, that's it. Good. So here we go. Any questions for this week's Q and A? I've got eleven. So I'll just go through them one by one. So before I do that, it's, oh, I'll just, I'm trying to avoid doing it. I think. Who am I grateful for today? I'm grateful. Am I grateful for the rain? No. Uh, I should do what am I not grateful for? That'd be easier. <laughs> I'm such a garump. I'm a garumpy old man. What am I grateful for? I'll tell you something I am gr grateful for, not grumpy for. Uh, I don't know if I've mentioned this. Um... I think last week or the week before, when I received my DNA test kit, I also, I think the next day, received a um, bowel screening test kit, which was something the NHS, the National Health Service in this country, they're doing, where it's normally people over 60 but they've be, they're short they're like lower in the age and i was included in that age group 
and I've been I got screened I had to send a sample let's not let's not focus too much on that I did talk about it in one of my podcasts so I'm grateful because the results came through and everything's fine and I did do a little whoop I go yeah something like that it might have been a bit more enthusiastic at the time but I received a letter and I thought oh Oh, 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 what's going to be in this? But it was just, you're fine and you get tested. And again, in five years as a routine thing. And so, yeah, that was good. That's nice. I've been bitten a few times, so I don't know what's what's occurring. I, th- I think a creepy crawly might have got onto Vinny and he's brought it home. Because I've, I've like cut, found a couple of things on me. But they're not like fleas. I don't know what they are. But it's uh, he's been really good. The whole of this year he's been fine. The whole of the summer it didn't get nothing on him. But the year before he did. I had to fumigate this whole place. And I was just like, oh no. Especially now it's kind of becoming heating time. So that will, that will, uh, yeah. We'll see. We'll see. Might just be a, I mean, I don't know, lice or something. I don't know. I got an itchy knee. It could be bed mites. Could it be bed mites? Perhaps I need to wash the bed. Or wash the bed in. Every 10 years is okay, isn't it? Uh, Anyway. So, let's do the questions, baby. I'm going to start from the top and go all the way, work all the way down. So, it's one, two, I've got Christine, Diane, three, Dimitri, four, and three, five, Anne, six, Joanne, seven, Chris, eight, Brittany, Nine, Brittany, ten, Leah. Oh, okay. So the the eleventh one. It wasn't a question. It was just someone saying that I loved this question. That was uh, Brittany Smith. So Brittany. Oh, sorry, I, should, I don't normally say people's surnames. Brittany and Chris Beck. Chris. Chris. Blimey. Chris, Chris Beckenham and uh, uh, Brittany Smith's, Smitherson. So that was, uh, yeah, this is the 10 questions. So what I'll do is I'll start with Christine. Okay. Do you have any questions about us? Listeners, we could answer in the comments. Thank you for all you do. Love to the Vinster. Ah, that's an interesting one. Do I have any questions for you? Um, uh, okay, there's, there's, there's a, uh, yeah, there's probably a continuing question in my mind. I suppose there's a couple. First of all, why do you listen? You know, why are you listening? Because I can't really... I don't necessarily understand. And it's... It it does intrigue me. Um, The second question would be, what do you get from listening to... I'm going to stop saying me. At the recordings, these recordings. What do you get from it? Uh, how does it benefit you? How have they helped you? Uh, I suppose another question, how did you find me? How did you find me? I've been hiding. Uh, what other things... 
Yeah, why do you, I suppose really, why do you listen? What are you listening for? It might sound like a really weird question for me to ask you, but, yeah, I do wonder. I just, like, I don't, I don't really, because in real life, people don't listen to me. Well, okay, maybe they do, but I, you know, I mean, if it is just because I'm boring, then cool, I, I guess. I mean, I'm the one that put the, the title of Let Me Bore You to Sleep, but. I don't personally find myself boring, but, you know, it's. I don't know. Yeah, that, that, I suppose that would be it. What? I mean, I guess, where are you from? Where, you know, it's, it's all those questions really. It's just more, I guess, more about the actual, to the listeners, you, but also about the listening. So I guess it's more from a podcast perspective. Where you're from? What ages are you? Where's your list? Yeah, where are you listening from? Uh, why are you listening? Is it benefiting? How is it benefiting? But I guess in some ways that's more feedback, but also maybe encouragement as well, perhaps. Um, Yeah, I mean, I don't know what a lot, some of the people look like, because there's pictures of the, I mean, to be, f I, I'm not one to really say anything, because I've got a picture of uh, myself when I was nine on my Facebook profile picture, <laughs> but it's, uh, yeah, there's quite a few people that don't have a picture, or they don't have um, or they have like a an animal or flowers or you know different things like that. So I'm curious what people look like. I guess I'm not really hiding my identity in the sense of I do have videos of me and there are pictures of me on Facebook, like on my Facebook page. But I just think I might as well put me on use a picture where I'm at my best and I think nine <laughs> I went downhill looks wise after the age of nine I was I think I was I just looked cute everyone used to say how cute I was and I liked it I liked when all the older women and the, the older girls oh you're so cute I said oh thanks can we have a cuddle now no, go away. Oh. You're not that cute. Oh. So, yeah. I just, yeah, I suppose I've got, I've got a few. My voice helped me. Yeah, I've got a few questions. Got a few questions. Yeah. But that's it. I suppose mainly just why, why you're listening. Which I think is maybe a weird question to ask someone that's listening. Yeah. Well, thank you for Christine. That's kind of my honest answer, to be honest. To be honest. If I was going to lie, what question would I... What answer would I give you? I don't know. My my <laughs> my lying answer would be, tell me everything about yourselves. I want to know everything about yourselves, your family, your lives. Because that would be a lie. That anyone listens to me knows that as well. It's oh man, I, I struggle to be interested in my own life. It's weird, but I'm interested in people's well-being. I want, I hope that people are okay. Who listen? I'm I'm, I'm doing this to help people, but if it's not helping people, then there's no point in me doing it. You know. 
but then sometimes I kind of think, well, how's talking a bunch of rubbish and just blabbering on, how's that helping people? And it makes you think, oh, I should go back to what I used to do and just stick to the hypnosis recordings and, you know, stick to the point. I, I occasionally did. I'd get on with it. And that would be better. I'd be better served to do that, even though it would be less enjoyable for me. And it, I've evolved from that. So it would be going backwards, personally going backwards, to being some hypnotic robot kind of thing, just repeating myself, uh, just different variations of the same thing over and over again, which is what I used to do. You know, there's, there's only so many ways you can really do a relaxation hypnosis session. With, I mean, I've I've done a lot of different ways, hundreds of different ways probably, but it's all with the same ultimate goal for the person to feel more relaxed, to have your mind slowed down and your body calm, and all that stuff and. I, I hope that that happens when you're listening to these recordings, that you feel relaxed and you feel calm. And I'm not too annoying at times. I know I probably will be to some people at times. I annoy myself. I do. <laughs> I do, honestly. Sometimes I say something or think something and I'm just like, what? And you know, but anyway, Christine, and I want to say thank you to everyone that's asked a question today, this week rather, and everyone has asked questions throughout the duration of these Q and A Fridays, which have lasted for quite a while now. I just want to say thank you because uh, I stopped counting how many I've done now, but there's been a few. It's since probably March time. And it's now October. So thank you for everyone. Not just this week, but all the questions have been asked. All the people have asked questions. And also everyone that listens to the recordings. So yeah, thank you. I'm grateful. That's what I'm grateful for. I'm grateful for the questions you send me. I knew I'd get there eventually. So I hope that kind of, and also thanks you for all you do. Love to fit. So thank you, Christine. So thank you for that question. I hope I've answered it. So the next one is Diana. Where, what is your go to beverage? Well, <laughs> it's a, if we're going about talking about now compared to in the past, because in the past it would have been a different answer because I was uh, definitely into the lager when I was younger. But nowadays I don't drink any alcohol whatsoever. Um, I used to have one cup of coffee a day in the morning, but... I ran out of coffee and money a few weeks ago and I didn't get any coffee for probably about a week. And I realised that I didn't really need that coffee. I didn't, you know, I, I felt like it was giving me a boost, a nice little boosty start to the day, a bit of a kick start, a bit of a, a bit of a brain fart to get me going. But after not having it for a week, I just thought, well, yeah, I don't really need it. I just have a cup of tea, which is what I've done since. Also, because I'd stopped having sugar at all, you know, uh, I don't have any sugar in the house. 
I I basically coffee is my personal opinion it's just like drinking mud it's really horrible without I mean milk does sweeten it a bit I find but I don't like milky coffee so it kind of you know I prefer I don't I don't necessarily want it strong but I do want it sweet so because because tea I'll have tea with something when I'm eating but when I'm not eating I don't drink tea because it's got no sugar in it and it's horrible when I'm eating a cup of tea it's it's okay I can even like biscuit not that I really buy biscuits anymore but I could di- dip a biscuit in a cup of tea without sugar and it'd still be nice I still enjoy it but that's probably because of the sugar from the biscuit it's probably going into the tea and sweetening it I suppose so I used to like coffee in the morning first thing with my breakfast nowadays the only the only two things that I drink liquid wise no three well, it's two but three you know I explain what I mean um is that way I'm not going anywhere weird with this is I have tea cups of tea probably have one two three four maybe five cups of tea a day maybe four four or five at least four I don't have any sugar in them but I do have like a little dash of milk a little dash I'm not a big milky tea drinker Which is probably why there's not a lot of taste. I mean, I'm thinking maybe to go start drinking a different type of tea, maybe Earl Grey, because that has got a taste and not one that I particularly liked in the past. But maybe if I could get a start drinking fruit tea or something like that, maybe that'd be better better for me. Not well, maybe better, yeah, but also kind of no, I don't know. So I had the tea, cups of tea. I don't necessarily drink the whole thing. It depends. But I don't, I never drink a cup of tea unless I'm eating. So, you know, it's say, and I eat every like four or five hours, probably five or six hours. It depends. I won't have a I won't have a cup of tea in the middle. So if they say I've got a neighbour comes round, I make her a cup of tea. She brings her own sugar and her own cup. <laughs> it's true. Um, she left a cup here now, but she did leave a bag of sugar. But she she ran low, so she took it back with her. And I make her a cup of tea, but I won't make myself a cup of tea because it's pointless. Because I won't enjoy drinking it. Uh, the only the only time I'll have a cup of tea is in order to have some something wet in my mouth. Because does that sound strange? If I forget to take, let's say I go around someone's house, which isn't that often, but and I don't have. Let's say I visit my dad. I will have a cup of tea because you know when you when you're talking or when I'm talking you know I need to I need to keep my mouth nice and lubricated which is what the water seems to do and I drink a lot of water so I would say my go-to drink is water and if we're going to go back throughout history my history water has been the one 
Now, if you was to pile up all of the different types of drinks that I've had throughout my life and put them in a pile, or let's say you had a bunch of lakes, <laughs> yeah, a bunch of lakes, because that works probably how much liquid there's been, a bunch of lakes of each individual or pond maybe I don't know how much the liquid takes up there's going to be a pond of water a pond I'd say probably lakes a lake of water a lake of lager a lake of coca-cola a lake of milk And, I mean, you could have a lake of tea. The, the tea one would be the low, low, low. I've gone decades about drinking hardly any tea. So it's only recently that I've been drinking tea, like regularly. Milk is something that I drink. I, when I said earlier, like, because I drink just water and tea. With the milk, technically, you know, because I... I have cereal with milk sometimes two three times a day so I've been trying to you know lose weight gradually and it's uh so I I drink I get through probably two pints of milk a day if not more technically I'm not drinking the milk but it is going in you know <laughs> it's it's entering my body uh. But in the past, when I was in my 20s, my early 20s, I used to have a pint of milk every time I had a meal in the evening. That, is. that used to be my, my thing. So I'd have a cooked dinner, which I'd cook myself, and I'd have a pint of milk out of the bottle. Those were the days when you could buy milk in bottles. You might still be able to, but now it's all like plastic containers. There was a time when a lot of milk cartons, they would be milk cartons, wouldn't they? Like they'd be cardboard or maybe like that rice, ricey cardboard stuff where it is cardboard, but it's kind of slippery cardboard. You know, it's, I don't know how to explain it, but... And you used to have to, and they'd be like little square boxes or taller ones. And you have to pull back the thing and then they'd pull it out again. And and sometimes it'd split and there'd be bits of cardboard and like it'd be, ugh, and the edge would be all soggy. I haven't seen one of them for years. Years, I tell you, years. I don't even know if they exist anymore. The only format I get milk in now is plastic. There's almost like, because a lot of plastic's gone the other way, like getting rid of plastic spoons, plastic straws for cardboard straws, which go soggy in McDonald's, for example. And, you know, take me to court McDonald's they might only go soggy because I take so long to eat my dinner. So I'm sure that if you eat quickly, you probably won't, don't go soggy. But I'm there for about an hour. If I, if I do go, not not done that for a while either. It's, uh, I nearly let myself, nearly e e exposed my secret eating habits. I tell the last time I went to McDonald's, right? The last time I went to McDonald's was after having... The results of my health check. No, not that results. The, no, after having, no I did. I got the results of my health check. No, I got, well no, I got a health check and she gave me the results. And that wasn't, uh, yeah, I think she'd... I'm trying to think. 
Yeah, that was it. So she got uh, my blood pressure and told me what my... Uh, I've got it over there somewhere. You know, blood sugar level, all that stuff. It's because I was pre-diabetic. Um, back in five months ago. And I decided to sort it out myself and get it get the sugar level down which I, I did and I was no longer in the in the danger zone for that so to celebrate I went to McDonald's which uh, some would say yeah good on you I would say Dumbo dum 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 I'm in the middle I mean when I think of someone else doing that Dum 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 me. I just can't help thinking I'm a hero. Whatever I do, it's weird, isn't it? <laughs> There's a hero. But yeah, um, milk. In the past, milk was definitely it's something I used to eat in a, a drink rather it during the day as well. So there'd be times when I'd have a pint of milk when I ate lunchtime and in the evening. Uh, partly because I was trying to put some weight on, it never worked. But uh, the calcium, I just figured that some calcium and some protein or whatever. So we had lakes, one of milk, one of water, one of lager, one of Coca-Cola. I like to think that the one with water would be the highest. And... Bearing in mind, we get water out of our food. So our body absorbs water out from the food that we eat as well. Unless all you do is eat dust. So, or muesli. So I think, I'm thinking, I'm thinking that water would be the the, the biggest lake. Or the, with the most in. I'd like milk to be a second. But I'm not so sure. But bear it in mind, I've been having breakfast cereal since I was at least seven. I don't know before that. I'm sure I used to, I mean, I obviously ate because I was alive at seven. But I just, I don't know, I can't remember before seven about breakfast cereal. Um, I can't really remember eating breakfast cereal at seven either. When can I remember? When was breakfast cereal? When did I remember? You know, I actually... Thinking back, I remember making some ready break in the kitchen where we lived when I was about probably 13. Wow, what other breakfast do I remember making? Oh, I remember when I was in a chip shop, living above the chip shop, because I had such money, well, so I'd like practically nothing coming in money-wise, I got myself a little part-time job in the supermarket. The first of three times I worked there, actually. It was just the local supermarket, and I did... Two hours in the morning. It was like half past six to half past eight. Or no, six to eight. That's it, six to eight. Easy job. It's just you had to be up early in the morning. That's all. That's the only... It wasn't... Um, I say easy. I mean, you know, sometimes like it would be... This was during the summer. So I didn't get to see it when it was got really messy. Like in the winter time. You know, with the snow and the mud and stuff. Um, but it was a really clean supermarket. It was, it was quite a new one as well. So it was, yeah, it was, it was easy. It's one of those ones you just maintain it, keep the place clean, and it stays clean. You know, it doesn't take a lot of effort. Never really got too too messy. And even during the day, I think they had a cleaner, 
someone that would clean up the aisles when there were spillages and they would make sure that the place was clean during the day as well so it wasn't it was quite easy to do just one of I used, one of my favorite things I used to like to do is well two things actually three if you include hiding and skiving uh, four if you include stealing some of the sweets they sell like these penny sweets and I used to sometimes have one I know it's wrong I'm sorry I didn't know it was wrong back then I did I did I I paid I paid for it well, I didn't pay for it like not, not financially but um, yeah the the second time I did it I was it the second time or the third time I did that job second time I think which would be so I did it in about 1987 so I did it in 1989 and I did it again in 1990 yeah it was one of my one of the only in 1990 that and uh, an evening cleaning job were all I had that was my income for uh, like a couple of months like over Christmas time yeah wow you had a yeah blimey I just I've forgotten all about this I had a job I had a, I've had a lot of cleaning jobs a lot and I realised I could just spend the next hour talking about cleaning jobs maybe Monday's boring objects cleaning jobs that's what I'm going to talk about how am I going to remember that though can someone remind me please that for Monday's boring objects I'm going to talk about cleaning jobs and I'll tell you I'll list I'll try and remember all the different cleaning jobs I've had seriously there's been a few there has been a few Ooh. Uh, okay so I reckon the water would be the biggest lake, the Coca-Cola, the lager is hard to really, not sure if I could even say which one would be the bigger one, because I drank lager for quite a long time. But then I started, I kind of, once I stopped that, I started drinking Coke. I don't drink Coke at all anymore. So that took me a while. I managed to weed myself off of that. And, but that was a long time ago. I stopped drinking Coke pretty much at the beginning of this year. And that was more due to a tooth issue. And I thought, nah. I don't want to. I don't want to go through this again. And drinking coke is not helping me. So I thought, or not drinking coke maybe may help me not to have to go through that. So I stopped drinking coke long before I had to stop eating sugar. But then I go through little phases where I just eat. I just like eat cakes and like. Nom, 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 nom. And it was like an empty, like bottomless pit. I was just like, mm, 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 cake, 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 mm, 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 chocolate. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> I don't know why. So, uh, well, I do know why, because it's nice. It tastes lovely. So I'm reckon probably milk, water. I'm going to say water is my go-to drink. I've been drinking water, bottled water since seventeen. I mean regularly. I haven't drunk tap water the whole time. It's it's unfortunate I had a job and part of the job was to test people's tap water in order to sell 
water in what infiltration systems whatever they're called or filtration systems infiltration that's a <laughs> that's spying isn't it so filtration systems yeah and unfortunately it put me off tap water uh, yeah and I just I've been drinking water out of the bottle since I've been doing that since yeah 1987 88 probably 88 that's 36 years I think I've had one glass of water that whole time out of the tap but you know I do I always drink water out of the tap when it comes to drinking tea but it's boiled it's just my own little thing it's, there's nothing wrong with tap water it's just my own little thing that I just you know if it came to it I would drink I'd drink water out of a puddle if I had to you know if it was if I was that thirsty but hopefully that won't happen so I'm guessing water is probably the yeah probably the one that would be the biggest possibly milk next and beer or lager rather coke and that's really I've not really been very uh, creative with my I've drunk quite a bit of juice I like orange juice drinks like uh, Kia what are they called not Sunny Delight Kia Kia Dora or whatever they're called uh, haven't had any for a little while but they're yeah I have uh, those apparently they've got quite low sugar compared not Sunny Delight but compared to um, I find the orange juice is a little bit too acidic for my tummy tum tum so yeah water I mean to to, <laughs> to answer your question quickly which I do like to do of course I'd say my go to drink is water or tea I do miss drinking coke because that was probably if we're going to go through my favourite drink ever probably Coca-Cola has probably been my favourite drink taste wise never I never liked the, the taste of alcohol anyway I didn't drink it for the taste A nice cup of tea, a nice sweet cup of tea. Yeah. Uh, coffee with enough sweetness is nice. A taste. Taste can be nice. But generally, I would say. Well, I do like a latte, which is weird considering I, you know, I don't like milky coffee. I do quite like a latte sometimes. There used to be this thing I did back in probably. 2000 2001 where I would shake the milk and then like shake it in, in the actual container so it got all frothy and just pour it in the milk and into the coffee rather and that would be my latte I was very proud of myself so yeah that is where I go to my beverage, my, my go to beverage. Um, to be fair, beverage isn't water, is it? Water is a drink. This, yeah, so let's say tea, tea. That was a quick answer, tea. Sorry it took so long. Um, thank you, Dinah. So, Dimitri asks me, do you like horror movies? I'd like to say no. And sometimes no is the answer. But I also do. 
I'm a little bit flippy floppy with horror movies. Um, I know that they're not particularly good for me to watch. I don't think it's very healthy, really, watching horror movies. I don't see anything good psychically or emotionally. But I do... I do quite like them. So if I'm in the mood, if I'm in the right mood, I love a good horror movie. The only problem is, and this isn't for all of them, but it can some of them can be a bit too formatty, a bit too predictable. And it I don't know how to explain it. Is if you've got it's you've got a hero and you've got the villain, the naughty monster or whatever then most horror movies I would say end with the hero winning. Not all, obviously, but you know, most prob possibly. Which is why I liked there's films like um Seven uh The Cabin in the Woods the, the there's a few that are just just not what you think or uh, yeah the the ones or the sixth sense. It's, yeah, it's, I don't know if that would be classed as a horror movie, but it was, it kind of is. Yeah, it's, those kind of movies, the only problem is, it's hard to watch, well, I find it hard to watch them more than once. I watched The Sixth Sense twice, because I wanted to study it. Okay. But before watching... A movie like the sixth sense I can say probably sixth sense is you have to not know what happens otherwise it's pointless watching it I don't I think yeah, it's like unusual suspects you need to not know what happens the and it's a, it's a hard one, isn't it? How do they promote a movie without giving away the secret of the movie? How do they how do they stop other people from telling each other about what happens in a movie? Because there are people out there that love to spoil other, other people's enjoyment and pleasure. As we're all aware, there are people out there that get a kick out of that. Um, which is why I'm not mentioning, you know, anything about these movies. Because they are great movies, but it, it's, you need to, there's lots, this, this isn't not the only ones, there's loads of movies. There's more than 20 movies in the whole world. they have a twist and it's a it's a cool twist and it's something that you know I mean if you look at some of the old Hammer movies Hammer House movies where the, the you know there'd be some a bloke would save yeah a, a man would perhaps save a woman from vampire castle from a maybe Dracula's castle or something and he's and and they either they overcome Dracula and whatever you know they win 
and they're leaving on a horse and cart. And he's like, he's saying, I love you. I'm so glad that Dracula's not around anymore. That he's gone away. The nasty Dracula man's gone away. And she's like, oh yes, I am also glad that the Dracula man has gone away. Oh yes, isn't it nice? We can really look forward to a wonderful life together. And he's like, yes, maybe we can go to Greece on holiday. And like, no, why Greece? I don't want to go to Greece. What's wrong with going to Italy? Well, I don't want to go to Italy. I've been to Italy before and I don't really want to go back there. Uh, it's only about three months ago that I was there before. I want to go somewhere like Greece. What can we compromise? Maybe go to Belgium? And they both laughed. No, seriously, I think we could go to um, France. And they both laughed again. How about we go to Spain? Okay, there. Let's go to Spain. And everything's fine, and the music's playing, and you see him, and he's going, and then you see her turn the other way, and fangs come out like, because she's she's turned into a vampire. So he thinks he's saved her from getting bitten or whatever, but no, he hasn't. He didn't question why she was wearing a scarf, did he? That's what he should have done. See, if you're going to save someone from vampires, before driving off with them, check why they're wearing a scarf. If they've got their neck covered, just check. Because otherwise, they might need some wood in them as well. If you need to put some wood into them, you know, it's good to know beforehand. That's enough about vampires and stakes and stuff. Uh, oh, horror movies. Do I like horror movies? Yeah, that twist. They used to have those twists. So it wasn't always like the the good guy wins or the good person, whatever, comes up trumps. Yeah, I do. I like horror movies. There's, I like funny ones though. There's a really funny one. And it's about a woman who is getting married. Her bride to be, no, her whatever the bloke is to be who's marrying her takes her back to his mansion with the family. And they've got this tradition of playing a game. Uh, I don't want to spoil the plot. But there's a certain game which they play. And the whole family is involved in it. And the description of the movie. Is more kind of horror and suspense. When actually it's funny. It's a very funny movie. I, I found it really funny. And. Yeah. That was good. I can't remember the name of it. Yeah I like things with twists. I like. Movies with twists. But I definitely like. Uh, horror movies with twists. It's. I've been watching the Alien, the lo the lo latest Alien one, and it's all right, but it's I don't know. Uh, they've made so many of the Alien movies; it's not original, is it anymore? I guess the first Alien movie, nothing had ever been made like that, in my knowledge. I guess what I found this isn't about this isn't a, ho a horror movie, but. I don't know if I've told you that my, one of my favourite movies is It's a Wonderful Life. That is my favourite movie of all time. It's a one. It's a Wonderful Life. Frank Capra, who produced that movie, I think he directed it and everything. He wrote it, as far as I'm aware. He also... I, I came across this other movie 
that also had a lot of the stars and the characters, the actors or whatever, from that movie in another movie called You Can't Take It With You. Jimmy Stewart, Lionel Barrymore. So I'm just thinking, like, this is really weird. So you've got Old Man Potter, who from um, the It's a Wonderful Life, he's pretty much the star of... I mean, he's one of the stars of It's a Wonderful Life, but he's pretty much the main star, kind of, of the You Can't Take It With You. Jimmy Stewart, who is uh, George Bailey, he plays Lionel Blair, not Lionel Blair, Lionel Barrymore's son in this. And other characters that were there I couldn't believe it. There's, there's George Bailey's dad in It's a Wonderful Life is also in the film. I think one of the clerks in the office of It's a Wonderful Life, he's in the movie. And there's a few people I saw, I was like, wow, did they film it at the same time? But I don't think they did. I think there was a few years between the two films. But it was strange when Lionel Barrymore pretty much had the same voice, pretty much looked the same. But in one movie, he was horrible. And in another movie, delightful. Like really nice and there wasn't a lot of difference it just showed you what a great actor he was because he was made able to turn his personality flip it he did win an Oscar actually uh, but because his Lionel Barrymore is Drew Barrymore's great uncle or something Something like that. So, he... Yeah. I just, like, quite surprised because he was such a lovely character in You Can't Take It With You, but in it, It's a Wonderful Life, ooh, not so much. Very surprising. And the reason he was in a wheelchair in It's a Wonderful Life is because I think he needed to be in a wheelchair. He was on crutches in You Can't Take It With You because it, it damaged his foot or his leg on set of one of the movies he did. And I think that caused problems for him like for the rest of his life. That's based on reading a Wikipedia page. So I don't know how much of it is true. So yeah, if, if I'm in the right mood, I like a nice horror movie. Although, I watched Scream, not the very latest one, but the one just before. And it had an actress that I really like. She plays Wednesday in Netflix's Wednesday. And the f the opening scene of Scream is exactly the same as the opening screen, the opening, opening scene, I imagine, of every Scream movie, I don't know. In the kitchen, phone call, whatever. At least in the first one. But that was, wasn't that the... The, the lady from Friends was in that, wasn't she? But I couldn't watch it because I really like this actress or actor. I really like her. And I couldn't watch her being hurt. Even though she's not really being hurt, I couldn't watch it. Strange, isn't it? Normally things like that don't really bother me. But... 
it's just something about her. I just don't can't remember. I just no, I can't see anyone. I couldn't watch a movie with her playing a victim of something, even though it might win her an Oscar and everything. I just couldn't. I don't want to see anyone hurt her, not even in in pretend. Weird. I don't know. Maybe I love her. Uh, so that's Dimitri. Thank you for your heart. Do I like? Yeah, I. I used to watch really. I used to love horror movies when I was a kid. I remember some in some like called Insomnoid, Inseminoid rather. There was zombie zombie flesh eaters. Uh, there was a few films that used that were banned that I got to watch when I was about. 10, 11. So, uh, Shogun Assassin, that was banned for a, a little while, I think. And it was those kind of movies that wouldn't even really be classed as, as gory. Well, they are gory, but it, it's just nothing more than you wouldn't, you wouldn't see, that you'd see like in zombie, uh, the Walking Dead, stuff like that. You'd see that. There was nothing... It's weird the way it's worked out that I probably wouldn't even be an 18 now. Probably a 15. And probably in 30 years' time or 20 years' time, it'll probably be a PG. <laughs> Which makes you wonder what they're going to... What's actually going to happen on the screen. I tell you, I, I, I think... what I, 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 Apart from stuttering, what I think is going to happen is, and it's it's moving towards this as well, quite quickly. If you go to, if you watch YouTube and people are able to make their own videos, it won't be long before people just sit in their own home and they watch a movie and they just make, the, they choose what they want it to be about. And what level of violence or what level of naughtiness there is. And they can watch anything about anything. And none of it, and it'll just all be created within seconds or as it, as it is, as it is played. And it'll be original and no one else will see it. It's, yeah, that's what's going to happen, I reckon. Which will be, well, it means we won't be able to talk about movies. Well, depends what the content is, I guess, doesn't it? Uh, right. So, thank you, Dimitri. Anne Free, Anne Ferry, or Anne Free. How many times does it take you to get the podcast recording correct without mistakes, or do you just wing it? Yeah, I just wing it. I don't. The only interruptions that I make are ones, well, it's Vinny barking, or the doorbell going, or the phone ringing. They're the main things that interrupt the recording. Or me coughing, or me needing to go to the toilet because I've been talking for so long. Uh, they're the only things, and what I do is I clap my hands as a, a marker on the audio so I can know to edit it and to go to those places but there's no sense of well there's no sense to what I do really is there but there's no yeah I don't I don't redo them I mean occasionally I have stopped recordings if I've been talking and doing one of these recordings and I realise that I'm in a in a not a very good space like not in a good mood uh, and I, maybe I didn't re I don't realise it at the time I'm not self aware of it at the time and then I realise like as I'm talking I will abandon the recording Occasionally, a few times, not many, but I've actually done the whole recording and I've listened back to it and I thought, nah, that was just, no, I was, 
that wasn't good. That wasn't nice. I, I was too grumpy. Or maybe I've opened up a bit too much personal stuff. But how many times it takes to get the podcast recording correct? Yeah, there is no mistakes. In a sense of it's all mistakes, you know. I. I mean, I I do edit, so if I start coughing or if I. Um. I'm trying to think. Yeah, I don't. I, I just leave the mistakes in. Because it's not rehearsed, it's not written down, not reading a script. Uh, this is just well, it couldn't be. It wouldn't be like this if it was a script. It would be quick to the point, flashy, clean. It would just you know, uh, it probably last for about ten minutes. It'd be more listenable to probably <laughs> easier to listen to so yeah there's no there's no there's no redoing there's I mean I would if I didn't have not I but if if there was no such thing as recording equipment where you could edit if there's no way of editing things and it had to be completely recorded from start to finish and that would have to be the end result then that would be difficult if does that make sense so in the old days I didn't used to edit I used to just start the recording finish the recording and upload whether it's a video or an audio and I didn't do any editing some people used to moan at me but that's how I did things so I wanted it to sound like it was live I wanted it to sound just real but over time and you know 18 years later it's the equipment's a bit better the the software for editing is a bit better Although I use basic software, I use basic editing software really. But it's not basic. It's, I mean, I do it on the iPad, so it's not as big. Maybe it's not basic, but it's, it's, it's nothing like complicated. I don't do complicated. I try not to. So yeah, it's. I guess wing it probably is the best word probably is the best expression and wing it I just wing everything I do pretty much in life I wing it so thank you I hope, I hope that answers your question uh, Anne asks did you get your DNA results back yet? no I'm starting to kind of wonder where they are because I'm waiting I'm now waiting to receive them, but I haven't. And like, where are they? So I'm looking forward to being able to do a podcast about it, which is one of the main reasons I did it, so that I can talk about it. But uh, my plan was to either Saturday or Wednesday talk about the the DNA test results and open the envelope while I'm actually making a recording that's what I thought you know just like have it just have my natural reaction rather than well it won't I say it, it wouldn't be rehearsed anyway I don't rehearse anything but it just it'd be nice to see how I actually feel when I see you know when I realise that I'm royalty you know what I mean? So, no, I haven't received them back yet. Um, but when I do, I will be making a podcast, which was the main reason I got it. I, I thought it's to make an interesting podcast episode. Just, it seemed like it'd be, just, it'd be nice to do something a little bit different. So, thank you, 
Joanne asks me, what is the most interesting thing you have learnt about studying psychology and counselling? Okay, I would say... What I've learnt is it's hard. <laughs> I think I'm learning a bit more about myself. So I think you might be talking more about like, you know, topic wise or inf new information. For me, yeah, I've learned a few bits and bobs about children and about um, social construction and about the rights that children have in m nearly all the countries of the world and how it you know, they do have rights and they have all this stuff. It, the thing is, I think for me it's been more... I've learned... The things that's interested me in a way has been my reaction to doing this because I've, I've struggled a little bit. I didn't give it the respect I thought it needed I, did, I didn't think it was going to be hard you know I'm coming into it with a background of already having studied psychology on my degree course for counselling yeah it wasn't like a, a huge part but it was part of it uh, and also child development and you know all the things that would lead to being a counsellor. You need to have a grounding in that stuff. But there was something, I don't know, I just found it a little bit more challenging. In some ways, this is more challenging than my other degree. In some ways, it really isn't. So it's... There's, because I've said for years, you know, sometimes the worst, the, the both the best and worst things about life is humans. You know, for me, it's like the best and like human beings are the worst, one of the best things there are about being alive, but they can also be the opposite. And... I, to me, I would say, being on my degree course before, that was definitely a thing. I found it very, very difficult to be around people for long periods of time and to have to interact with them. But on the flip side, that was the best part of the course, being around people and getting to know people and making new friends. It's a, it's a weird, weird thing. It's... I don't know which side was the strongest. So I know which side was the strongest sometimes. But I had support... Uh, during the course from a couple of fellow students but on this I'm kind of on my own <laughs> I don't mean like poor me but I'm yeah it is a solitary study it's supposed to be and I guess it would be quite nice to I mean maybe I could reach out to some of the other students I don't know we'll see but yeah I think just how hard it is that that's what I've um that's what I've learned it's not easy so counseling because this 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 degree course isn't counseling although it is part of the psychology and counseling department on the Open University. 
So I've already got a degree in counselling and I got that in 2010. I think the hardest part of, for me, the hardest part was for the counsellor, for my other degree course, was the, probably the coursework, the academic side. I would say I excelled at the practical. I'm not saying I was good, but I think I did better than I did with the, well I know I did better with the practical than I did with the academic. So that was something I learned. I think with counselling, it helps people. I know it's supposed to help people and you know, I don't think I should be surprised that counselling helps people. If I've decided to do a degree in counselling, I shouldn't be like, wow, this actually really helps people. Yeah, of course, but I was, I was a little bit taken back by how it could help someone in a fairly short time to move someone from being there to not there anymore, you know? Where Wherever there is, to move away from there. But naturally, not, you know, just of their own accord. So, yeah, counselling. I also learned that I'm, I'm not, I've not, I've not got, I don't think I've got the right personality to be a counsellor, and if I was a counsellor, I need to have everything else sorted out, I need to, I could only do that kind of work again. I won't be doing it again, but I could only do it if all other things were sorted. Uh, in other words, financially, um, there was no other stuff going on for me. Because then I could give myself to the clients for the period of time. And I could only see a few clients a week. I couldn't do it every day. Maybe six people a week or something like that. Maybe ten, I don't know. I couldn't, um, I couldn't, like before, when I was doing it, I was seeing clients coming home to a grotty, mouldy room and didn't have any money even to eat sometimes. And that, that was hard because it was hard to maintain being positive to be helpful to someone else when I wasn't in a good space myself so it was yeah I don't think I've got a stable enough brain to be able to be a counsellor and I learnt that I, but I also found that I was able to leave myself outside the door I was going to say with my shoes but I did keep my shoes on because that would be weird He's barefooted. He's a nice bloke. And he did listen to me and he nodded at the right places. But he had his feet out. He hadn't cut his toenails. <laughs> yeah, that would be weird. I was also amazed at how sometimes just letting it out is enough. I had a had a someone come to me quite early. This was during my training. It was bereavement, and he came in, and he howled, literally howled for about forty minutes, and they left. Came back the next week, 
Nothing. Just chatted. Came back the next week. Don't need to come back anymore. I said, well, okay. If you need to go, we can go. You don't got a beer, but I'll keep next week's open just in case. Did. Came back. Said, no, don't need to be here anymore. That was it. He just needed one session of... He needed the release. And everyone's different. That's another thing. Everybody's different. That's something I've learned. I know it's, it could be a little bit of a cliche. Yeah, maybe all different. Um, I'm unique, just like my all my friends. It's, but we are. We're all different. Something that I think I did, I was able to do, but it was naturally, is I didn't assume that I understood what people were were getting at. Because the communication is not always very clear, I find, in conversation. And I have to kind of dig a little bit to find out what the person means. Just anyone talking. Unless I'm not interested and I just don't, I don't, I just like let them say what they want and I don't, don't really care. But in a, in a counselling session, first thing I notice is I care what they're saying. I'm listening to what they're saying, which isn't the same, isn't always the case in real life. I wasn't waiting to talk which is the case in real life. That's why I'm normally wait, waiting for them to stop so I could talk. That's why this is better for me because it's just a, it's a monologue rather than a conversation. Although this is my way of having a conversation by asking questions or answering questions rather. But I was able to do that with with counsellors, uh, with counselling. I think that was what it was. It was a, like having a special place a certain like a room no other distractions just me and them they're there for a reason I'm not just talking about the weather I can't have a conversation like that I can do that with dog walkers can't do it with a human I'm not saying dog walkers aren't human okay I can't do that in a in a a general situation I don't really necessarily want to talk about the weather and some people would come in and want to talk about the weather and I would steer them towards why they're here usually you know, it depends I mean I might want to talk about the weather depends you know but I like the idea there was a reason for it I like there being a reason for a conversation so I had someone phone me up two days ago. You all right? I said, yeah. I said, what's up? She said, no, nothing, nothing, nothing. How you doing? I said, like, what do you want? She said, what do you want? I said, I'm not being rude. You phoned up for a reason. What the was? What is the reason you're calling me? Now she did have a reason. And then she told me the reason. I said, you ain't got to do all the fluffy stuff beforehand, buttering me up. Just... She want just like what is it you want? We can still chat, but just you know, I, I don't need. She's a local person. I don't need a phone me up, you know, to have a chat about anything, unless you know, because I knew that. Well, I knew she wanted something. I could just, I could sense it. I could sense it in her voice. And she said, oh, okay. And she told me, I said, okay, right. Well, that's, so you wanted something then? I said, don't, well, you, don't, you say you didn't want anything, but you did. I said, I'm not being rude. It's just like, just be honest. Just just get to the point. What do you want? And then we can chat about other stuff afterwards. But if you're calling for something, don't try and make it as a normal conversation. By the way, you know, can you... I don't know. I probably didn't present that very well. It, was, it wasn't a horrible conversation. I wasn't rude. I was just like, yeah, I wasn't rude at all. I don't, don't do rude. Don't do rude. But it was like, just get to the point. <laughs> what is it you want? 
I presented that like I was really rude to her. I wasn't, trust me. I'm uh, not doing myself any justice there. I'm quite good on the phone, actually. I don't like talking on the phone anymore, but I am still quite good on the phone. I used to be brilliant on the phone because that's what I did for a living for years, talking on the phone. Talking people into buying car insurance. So, yeah, that was my expertise. Not so much now, but... I don't have I don't have many friends I don't have many people phone me and I don't want many people phoning me either most of the time actually I don't like talking on the phone much it, I've gone off of it now it's probably because I did it for such a long time for a job and now yeah over time I just like nah I don't really I mean, I suppose I would, given a situation, but, and also texting, I'm not into that. I don't need, I don't want a 20, I don't want a never-ending conversation. That, I struggle with that. You know those conversations, well, that literally never end. I mean, I've got a friend that I've known for 20 odd years, over 20 years. And she sent me a text message the other day, so it's like, how was your day? What the hell? Did, what do you mean? What? How was my day? What's, what was a weird message to send me? How are you doing? What's going on? How was your day? If you want to know how my day is, listen to my podcast. Because I'll tell you, you'll be able to see how my day is. I'm not repeating it. <laughs> I didn't say that, but I'm, I know it sounds rude. I don't mean it to be rude. But, you know, I'll, I'll talk on the phone. And, or be talking in person with someone. And I'm thinking, because I said this to my friend. I said, look, I prefer to be on my own. I do. It's a fact. She said, yeah, but you're so, and I'm like, I'm not really want to spend time with people, really. She said, but you're so friendly. You're so chatty. I said, yeah, but what you don't realise is, in my mind, if I spend an hour chatting with someone, that's a conversation I could have had for a podcast. And I would have got just as much out of it. I don't need someone else in the room with me. So that's a two hours of my time wasted. Not not wasted in a bad way, but just that I could have used to produce a podcast to maybe help people to fall asleep because it was so damn boring. And I started thinking, and I realised another reason why I don't really like people being around Sort of, I don't watch TV with anyone. My neighbour loves boxing. Nah, I watch it on my own. It's because it's not that they'll talk. I mean, it's partly that. You're like, just, I don't want them disturbing me when I'm watching it. But what's more likely to happen if we're watching a movie or boxing even is I will talk incessantly. So I don't get a chance to enjoy the movie or the boxing because I'm the one talking. Isn't it weird? It's like, so it's, that's what having other people around does to me. It turns me into a chatterbox. Because I only have people around that I know. Like anyone, you don't, don't have people, you don't have strangers in your house, do you? So... It's, yeah, and this is better because I prefer just doing this, I prefer just talking. I, I know not everyone can, not everyone would feel comfortable, rather, I was going to say not anyone could do this, anyone could do this, there's not a human being in the world that couldn't do this, 
but no, not everyone would enjoy doing it, and not everyone would want to, obviously, because they don't, most people don't do what I do. And I'm not talking about podcasts, I'm talking about this style of whatever this is. And a lot of people probably wouldn't enjoy it or feel comfortable doing it. I mean, I've got this, I sort of say friend, but he's a, like a YouTube colleague from many years ago. And he used to call himself Smunchkin. And he would do these videos and they were great. And it is very, um, very feelingy, very gentle, says such lovely words. The, the opposite to me, really. And he stopped making videos because it took so much out of him. And he, he did say to me, I wish I could do what you do. I said, what do you mean? He said... I wish I could just make a video and not care and just post it. <laughs> I said, that's rude. He said, you're rude. No, but he said, I can't. He had to keep re-recording, re-recording, re-recording. And I think he needed to, he had to write a script, like write down what he was going to say beforehand. And that's not something that I've ever done. I mean, occasionally I've done it. If there's things I want to remember... You know, especially if it's a hypnosis recording, I'm thinking, well, I want to talk about the idea of, I don't know, a flower, you know, a weed drying up in the sun and then turning into a flower and it's the rain coming down and the flower growing up. And, you know, the the weed being the distress and the, the flower being relaxation and calmness or whatever. So I might have that. And the rain could be like healing energy, like dripping down. And you could feel it. Oh, just bang my glasses off. You could feel it in the top of your head, almost like a power shower. And it just tinkles, tinkles through your body. So that as an idea, like... So I might sometimes think of that to start with in the past when I used to do those kinds of recordings. But the amount of times I'd then go on and do something completely different. <laughs> really. It was just... I don't know why. I've forgotten what the question was. What's the most interesting thing you've learned about studying psychology and counselling? How did I get to talk about... I really went off that subject, didn't I? Thank you for getting me back on track, Joan. Um, Joanne, rather, sorry. Um, yeah, I... That's it, really. Just, I kind of learned how hard it is for me. I've struggled. I'm, found, I'm, I'm finding it difficult. I am. And there's a part of me that does want to quit. That's the honest fact, so time will tell, but I am up to date, so that's pretty good. Uh, thank you for your question. Um, Chris asks, I feel like you're famous. Do you feel famous? No, is my answer to that. I really don't at all. Brittany answers the question as well. I love this question. Um... I really don't, I don't feel, I mean, it, realistically, if we're being truthful, oh, I don't know, the amount of people that have listened to me, the, the amount of different people, I don't know, I don't know how many different people, individual people have listened to me, how, um, how many people listened once and thought, eh, eh. Next, um, how many people have listened to me for a period of time because that's what they needed and then they just moved on? How many people have listened to me intermittently? How many people listen to me continuously, like for years? 
so it's going to be in in the thousands but not a lot um on a slow day i get on an average day i get probably I don't know, for the last week, I've had about 40,000, 41,000 views in the last seven days, so whatever that works out a day, like 6,000 or five, 6,000. But I've also had, was it 15 million, 16 million, 17? Since I've been doing this, since I've been doing podcasts, I've probably had 20 plus million listens 20 way over 20 million listens of my podcasts over the you know the period but that's over like 18 18 years nearly but that's not 18 million individual people so there might be there might be a hundred thousand different people have listened to me there might be ten thousand it's really hard to figure it out. I'll be honest with you. It's very hard. Could be a million. I don't know. But it's definitely not a million regulars. So it's a handful. Just a few thousand people that listen regularly. So I don't really feel famous. I don't feel infamous either. And infamous is what I wanted when I was younger. When I was like in my 20s. I wanted to be infamous. I wanted to be known for being a bad boy and a bad boy of comedy is what I wanted. And then as I got a bit older, I realised I just wanted to be funny. I just wanted to, I wanted the audience to like me because I'd never tried that before. And by accident, I went on stage and I was funny, which sounds weird if you're doing stand-up comedy. But I went on stage and I'd forgotten my act. And I, like, I didn't have it written down because I used to have it written down and stuff. And I didn't... I felt I was late for the gig. It was in the middle of nowhere. And I went on stage and there was a very small audience. And I just went on and started making silly sounds and just being myself probably for the first time ever maybe for one of the only times ever and it went really well and I didn't know if it was I really didn't know if it was even um, copyable if I could do it again it's it's weird because the feedback that the, the lady that ran the club she wasn't there but that night but she said even the bar staff thought you were funny and like she she got such a good response for me. And I was, oh, I just did 10 minutes. I got paid, but it was a 10 minute slot. And I keep going back to the comedy, don't I? Do you notice that? There's always a way back to talking about the comedy. So yeah, I don't class myself as famous but there was a time when I used to call myself, this is probably like nine years ago, I used to call myself the most successful failure online because of the amount of people that were listening to my recordings and the fact that I was just getting into debt doing it. It was costing me money. So I used to call myself the most successful failure. Because on one level I was doing well, and another level I was really not. But I don't really class myself as that anymore. Because since then, I don't think I'd even class myself as successful, really. Just, I'm a plodder. But it's good. I think it's good for me and it's hopefully helping other people and it gives me some purpose. It gives me a reason to get out of bed. It gives me 
makes you makes you feel like my life is worthwhile and i hope it is i hope it is so i think it's very kind of you to say that you feel like i'm famous um I keep having a creepy crawly jump on me from Vinny. I think he's going to have to have a bath. Yeah, he doesn't, you notice, I say the word bath and he doesn't look up because he doesn't know the word. Which is good. Because, you know, I know some people, they, they, they use the word bath to scare or to like, you know, wind up the dog. And I don't do that. Mind you, I can't get him into the bathroom unless I've got his lead on. So that's very kind. Thank you for the question. Blimey, I've got three more questions. How long have I been talking for? How long? Wow. Hour and, hour and three quarters, roughly. I'm hungry now. So Brittany has got a question. This may be a taboo topic for some. Okay, that sounds interesting. And quite personal. Okay, let me guess. You want to know... Uh, two inches. No, that's not what you're asking. Okay. This may be a taboo topic for some and quite personal. So I understand if you don't want to answer. But I'm going to ask anyways. You spend so much time and effort supplying this service that has enhanced the life of everyone in this group for free. How do you pay for your life? <laughs> pay for my life. That sounds dramatic, doesn't it? How do you pay for your life? Um, okay, I am... I'm on benefits. I am classed as disabled because of the bipolar my mental health is class is quite severe even though I that's a thing no one believes no one that meets me believes well if you meet me enough times you probably would believe that something a bit weird of me but I I don't fit that um, necessarily fit that criteria for that people have inside their heads about someone that's not doing so great and i remember some someone saying to me well you're always so friendly when i see you and then she phoned me and this was different from the time before but she this person phoned me and i, I said you're right i said no she said, what? What's going on? I said, oh, just in the mood. I wasn't rude to her, but she could not believe the tone of voice, the the way I was. was. And I wasn't rude at all. She was upset because I wasn't being friendly. So it was kind of one of those weird ones. I wasn't being rude, I wasn't being unfriendly, but I wasn't being friendly. And she struggled with that because I'm usually a very friendly person. And it happened to someone in the park. I was coming back from the petrol station. I didn't want to go, but I had to go. And I'm coming back. And normal thing, like she's sh this is a different person. Oh, do you want to come down and sit down for a bit? I said, no, I can't. She said, what's up? I said, I'm in a mood. I can't. I can't. I can't be around people. I'll catch you later. And that surprises people that know me. Doesn't didn't surprise my friend downstairs because he saw me like that a lot. But I generally don't go out when I'm like that. So anyway, that's that's why I'm on benefits. I worked. I did 26 years working, and I've been on and off benefits. I've been on and off medication for different things. Uh, mental health issues and stuff that's a different podcast really but yeah every time I've got a job I've, be, I've got ill and it's not because I'm lazy because I'm not lazy well sometimes I'm lazy 
but ultimately you know there's no there's no reason for me to be doing this is that this is just to help people and i'm i'm not lazy with this it takes probably three to four hours a, a day of my my time to make a podcast every day especially as they seem to be getting longer and longer uh, with the editing and the uploading and the processing and then making a video and then promoting them and all that stuff making images and yeah so what was the question but how do you pay for your life Am I struggling at times? Financially, yeah, it's not not easy sometimes. Some weeks are better than others. I'm in debt, so I've got... Uh, I will be out of debt on the 25th of January 2028, I think, for one of my debts. Or was it February? But it's January or February 2028. I just spoke to them yesterday. Uh, so, yeah, I've got one one debt. Credit card's £100 a month till about 2028. And the other one's £63.42 a month or something. And, yeah, it's just not easy sometimes. Constantly, I've still got people asking to borrow money off me and Asking me, for, asking me for stuff. I don't think a week goes by when I'm not asked to lend someone money, or they want something, or if I got this, or I got that, and I struggle to say no. That's one of my my downfalls. So if I ever go for a job interview, that's what I'm going to say. I struggle to say no. If they if they go that like, well, I've heard about all the good things you can do. I've heard all about the positive stuff for about five hours. Now, Mr. Jason, tell us about a negative about yourself. Tell us about one of your flaws. I say, well, I give too much. I struggle to say no. Oh, yeah, and I'm a thief. I, I like to steal things. So, yeah, that's uh, arson. Um, so, yeah, that's that's kind of... So yeah, at the moment, yeah, it's it's hard. Uh, what if you are what if and if you are what kind of monthly contribution from the members who are able would make a significant difference to you? Well, any anything that people can do to help. I mean, I'm trying to cut down my expenses for this thing, but there's all you know. I had to get rid of my website yesterday because I couldn't pay that, but. Do I need a website? Four or five people a day go on it. You know, it was, I thought people, I thought, I did think that people would want to listen to the old stuff, but they don't. So it's, you know, I might as well just, for now anyway, let's just leave that one alone. Um, yeah, there's, there's expenses connected to making these podcasts, the podcast hosting, there's the, you know, the software I use for different things. So yeah, it's 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 not free, it doesn't this but at the same time it's worth it. So any any help I get is just appreciated. I mean I tried to, I thought about doing the page well, I did do the Patreon a couple of weeks ago or last week and I spent <clears throat> excuse me, I spent a whole week setting it up. Once I launched it, I didn't feel right, so I got rid of it. So, yeah, I just... I, mean, I would like to be in a financially good situation. And I'd be lying if I said I didn't. It'd be nice to be debt-free and to maybe even be able to move somewhere that I want to live. Move somewhere nice have a, a decent income but I think the only way that's going to happen is if some I have a a wealthy benefactor that's it you know it may be 
you know, a billionaire comes along and says, oh, we love what you do. There you go. You can help people and enjoy your life as well. And that would be, that'd be quite cool. But unless that happens, I don't really see any way that things are going to change. But, you know, it's all right. Things are okay. I don't know where I would be if it wasn't for what I do online. There wouldn't I'd, I'd I would struggle to. Well, I wouldn't have any purpose even if I was doing a degree. It's, that doesn't. I'm doing that for fun, and for one of my, as a target, as a challenge, and as a, for education really, just to you know. St- get my brain working a bit more and which is healthy but without this I don't know I don't know how I even got by before without this without doing these recordings or I don't know how I managed what what was I what was my purpose before you know 18 19 years ago what what was my purpose? So, yeah. So this, I'll, I'll continue. Even if it meant going back to just recording, you know, let's say all the recording equipment broke and I couldn't replace it, I just go back to doing it on a recording it on a phone or recording it on a on a laptop or a tape recorder or something like that you know just recording it online even though it might not sound very good it still be there you know Uh, so yeah it's it's yeah that's my answer I think I don't know if I answered it very well (sighs) oh Brittany I've got another question from Brittany Here's my backup question if you want to skip the uh, the other one. Oh, now, now you told me. Uh, what is your moon, morning routine if you're getting ready to go out? In order. Blimey, in order. And how long does each step take you? I.e., do you eat, drink, shower, hair, makeup, try... Makeup? Try on different outfits, packing up your purse. Purse? etc I don't have a makeup or a purse um I used to have a bag I used to have a and people used to say it's a purse cuz it kind of probably did look like a purse but it wasn't a purse it was a bag I think it was a bag it might have been a purse but I think it was a bag what is my routine makeup I could do with some makeup I'm so good looking, I have to make down. Uh, what is your morning, morning routine? My morning routine really is I wake up in the morning. Vinny's still in bed, because I wake up before him. I do a whiz whiz. I then... I have to take my acid reflux tablet. More information than you needed. Then I have to wait about half an hour to an hour before that's what I can eat. My throat, I've been talking so long, my throat is starting to get dried up. Then, depending on, I do normally go online, check the stats, all that stuff, you know, just see if I've had anyone visit my YouTube channel and if I've had anyone listen to my podcast episodes and is there there any activity on the Facebook group and maybe check the local news just do that for a little while if I'm editing a recording then that's what I'll do I'll do the editing so that will will take up my time then I will put the milk I'll wash up my cup and my bowl I've got two bowls one cup isn't that sounds like a video I watched once and the 
I make a, a border kettle and then I put a tea bag into the cup put the hot water into the cup from the kettle put that over the side because the next thing I do is I put milk into the bowl that I've just washed up make sure I rinse it so I can't smell the washing up liquid put it into the microwave for two and a half minutes go and I brush my teeth uh, floss or whatever else mouthwash face wipes I've got these maybe they'll make up removers but you know I kind of use thing on my face twice a day to make me look beautiful and they don't work brush my hair if I've got any hair because you know sometimes I'm bald sometimes I'm not depends whether or not I've gone to sleep wearing my wig is that what you're thinking no sometimes I shave my head sometimes I don't so I look in the mirror recently I've been checking out my biceps <laughs> you ask me for the truth I'm telling you and it's not like I'm tensing them I just like to just move my arm up so I can see the muscle tensing on its own because I've been doing weight training every day for a while now so it's starting to show a little bit which is nice and then a few hours of that posing in the mirror I go into the what I might do now yeah I go into the kitchen if Finney's still in bed I'll go into the kitchen I'll take the milk out of the microwave I'll still have it in the bowl though because I've always hurt it burns my fingers and then I pour I get some milk put it into the tea just a dash of milk put the milk back in the fridge I get the ready break mix and I mix that in with the milk hot milk add some raisins and some fruit a little bit of dried fruit on top and then I go into I carry them I lift the I hold the cup with my left hand and the bowl basically between my body and my left arm or in my right hand I can't remember I think yeah it's that way I can open and close the door turn the light off in the kitchen go out of the kitchen close the door always keep the kitchen door closed and then I walk into the living room and if I needed a new bottle of water, I'd go and get a bottle of water because I've got packs of them. I've only got one pack left, but normally you've got two or three packs near the front door. And then I get that there, sit down, turn TV on. Uh, sometimes I check the news, or other times I go on to YouTube and check out what's going on YouTube and yeah just potter around really while I have my breakfast and then that'll just be my breakfast if I then then later when I'll get uh, get cleaned up like properly but if I'm just gonna have a breakfast sometimes I'll have my breakfast and a couple of hours later I'll go back to bed with Vinny because he's still asleep because uh, I wake up sometimes four or five in the morning but then I'll go back to bed again maybe eight or seven or eight for a couple of hours and he, he'd normally get up with me after that or he wakes me up when he's ready and because now it is 11.52pm I had my breakfast at six this morning And he's been so good right now. He hasn't made a sound, has he? The whole time we've been doing this recording, 
He's laid here next to me, fast asleep. He's been so good, such a good boy. And if I was going to go out, then I would either have a shower, uh, get ready that way, and go get dressed, put all on all new clothes, and go out. You know, if it's so if I needed to go to the petrol station or if I had an appointment, uh, depending on where it was, or yeah, I'm trying to think what other routines I've got. I'm trying to, I do need a routine, I do, I do, I do, I do, even more so now with the university course because I've got three, three and a half hours. To devote to that every day, well, at least five days a week. So I need really need to start organising myself because this this takes three and a half to four hours a day for the podcast. The studying is three and a half to four hours a day. been 18 hours times by 5 or divided by 5 3, 6, 9, 12 13, 14, 15 60, 17, 18, 19 okay, 18 4, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 13, 15, 16, 20 so about 3.5 hours a day isn't it 5 days a week 18 hours ish 3, 6, 9, 12, 13, 14, 15 16, 17 and a half Okay, I did that one with one hand. Pretty, pretty good at doing things with one hand. I can count, count. I can do times table. I can do divide, and I can also do little hand puppets. If I put little puppets or finger puppets, I can draw little thing faces on my thumb and stuff. Yeah, I'm very creative with my hand. So I'm trying to think what else I. Yeah. Different outfits. I wear the same thing all the time. Not the same actual item of clothing, but I have, I think, eight pairs of tracksuit bottoms, which are the same. And I have... So I pretty much wear that the whole time. Just, obviously, wear different ones. I've got a bunch of T-shirts. I've got two kind of cardigan things at this I'm, I'm so unfashionable it's ridiculous but no one sees me really i mean okay when i'm walking in they see me but people don't i'm not it's not like i'm going out if i was going out like out out like in some kind of social capacity i would not want to be wearing what i wear that would not be ideal. Really. Not really, no. But I don't have a purse. I don't have a bag of any kind, really, anymore. I used to. When I first moved here, I had a bag. But now... Yeah, yeah. as far as trying on different outfits, no, I was wear the same thing, pretty much. So yeah, that, that's, that's my routine as far as that kind of stuff. But I'd like to get more of a routine, as, you know, regarding... When do I do, when do I spend time doing the course, the the degree? When do I spend time making a podcast? When do I spend the time editing and processing the podcast? Because I don't do them one, one after another. Uh, then I've got the time to take this little fellow out, which I do three or four times, sometimes five times a day. And 
yeah, it's it's just trying to sort of, I'd like to be more organised, and maybe I will be, maybe I will be. So thank you for that, I hope I've answered those questions in a kind of a way. The last question is from Leah. Where do you get these often amusing cover art pictures for your podcast cover? Do you use AI or some fancy app? Many of them are very intriguing, nice work. Well, thank you very much. It's a mixture. It's a mixture. Sometimes I create the image myself from other images. Sometimes I I do use AI, but I don't leave it up to AI usually. I, I tell AI what I want. So if I want to, uh, an image of a cat on stage doing a stand-up set to an audience of dogs, then it will give me some images and it might take a while before I find one that I like and then I'll reuse that and then I'll have to edit that using Canva and adding bits and bobs and changing things and erasing things and, you know, it can be... It can be quite quite time consuming sometimes, especially if I've got a specific thing or an idea of what I want the picture to be. You know, I've spent hours in the past just on an image because I've really wanted it to to have a certain thing, a certain something, you know. So I just, I guess it really, my creativity when it comes to the images more and more as I use the AI is just knowing what I want and trying to get the AI to produce what I want. So it's it's not hard, really, it's just finding ways to word it and trying to I mean there is a part of me I want to do an image that will be attractive to listeners but I don't think any images I do people aren't going to listen to my podcast because of the image I mean that maybe they will but I doubt it it's it's not like YouTube YouTube the thumbnails are so important, even though I put very little effort into my thumbnails, really. Perhaps I need to start because I'm getting such small views on YouTube. It's really, really ridiculous. Um, but then every new recording I upload or every new video is 10 hours long. I think if I stick to it, if I stick to the 10 hour long videos, just keep doing it, I reckon in a year, maybe a couple of years, it will start to pick up. I'm not sure, we'll see. So yeah, that's where I get the images. I kind of, sometimes I create them, I search online for different things and I put them together to make it like a, an image but lots of different images to put together and uh, take the backgrounds off and redirect them and you know it's lots of different different ways but uh, sometimes I just put in an uh, put put in a like to chat GPT make this image and it just makes the correct or it makes an image that I like straight away. However, there is other AIs that I could use, other software that I could use. But I'm quite a loyal person. And I guess I'm a person of habit as well, I guess. I suppose. So using the same one every day suits me. But there are other image makers, other image AI creators that are possibly more advanced than than chat gpt that may the well there are they're ones that that's what they're for 
They're literally for creating images. ChatGPT does lots of different things. So, yeah, that's it. That's the answer to that question. Um, I'm glad you like the images. So, according to my clock, I've been talking for over two and a quarter hours. And, blimey. Mind you, do you remember when I first started doing these Q&A Fridays? I think the first one lasted about three hours. That's a long time. The thing is, 11 questions, no, it's 10, wasn't it? 10 questions. 10 questions is, that is quite a few questions. I mean, I'm, thank you for all your questions, but I don't think I've ever had that many in one, at one time before. Uh, normally I might get four or five, but 10, 10, 10 is, uh, bit more than normal yeah cool so this is Q&A Friday it's a day late apologies it's now blimey it's 1204 in the afternoon so it's midday I'll have a break from this have something to eat and then I reckon it'll all be uploaded and available to listen to within the next few hours. Tomorrow is Sunday Papers. Monday is Monday's Boring Objects. Monday Boring Objects. Tuesday is Trivia Tuesday. And then... Thursday is Healing Thursday. Friday is Q&A Friday again. I'm hoping that I get my DNA test back so I can talk about it on Wednesday. Anyway, thank you for listening. Remember, 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 remember to be kind to yourself because you do deserve to be happy. Be gentle with yourself. Lots of love. Bye. Relax. In a more deep and meaningful way. Maybe in a way that can not just allow you to feel calmer now and throughout the time we spend together here not just relaxed at the end of the recording when it's finished and you can enjoy that sense of comfort and peace but also I think it would be nice to have those feelings of relaxation continue for longer after the recording is ended. So that you can still benefit from listening to my voice maybe in a few hours time perhaps tomorrow and then by listening regularly especially if you find like some people do, and myself as well. I Sometimes I'll find one particular recording that really 
resonates with me. And I'll just listen to it over and over again. Every morning, every evening. There was this recording from going back to about 1999. It was a, it wasn't hypnosis, but it was a guided visualization. So it kind of was hypnosis, really. And I managed to find it again, and it still has the same effect on me. And part of it was. person's voice relaxed me. Just felt so peaceful. And I'd look forward to listening to her in the morning and in the evening. And I knew before even pressing the play button that as soon as I'd done that, pressed the play button, this was in the days of CD players, press the play button. In fact, it might have even been a tape, tape recorder. I'd lie down on the bed and then even without necessarily listening to her words because I had them memorized really. It was as if my body knew exactly what to do. And the muscles just almost went into automatic relaxation. And I remember my mind would slow down. Now, now I was, I was listening to this recording in the early days of learning hypnosis. And long before I ever made any videos or audio recordings myself because I didn't start doing that till 2006 but I knew I knew how helpful I found being able to just let go, to have that trust in the person that I'm listening to. Knowing that it's going to be just as relaxing, if, if not more so, each time you hear my voice, you may feel the same. Some people have been listening to me for over a decade. Maybe not solidly, obviously not 24 hours a day, but 
maybe people come back. Some people maybe listen every day. And something that I do, which you may not realize by listening, is when I record these recordings, now, for example, I also am affected by the words that I say. So if I said to you, focus on your feet, notice your feet relaxing. I will be focusing on my feet. I will be noticing my feet relaxing. If I said focus on your hands, and maybe notice the difference between each hand. Perhaps notice the, the air in the room, the temperature of the room on the backs of your hands. You may start to notice what almost feels like a very light breeze. Even though there may not be any type of breeze at all where you are right now. And as you become aware of your hands I'm also aware of how relaxed my hands are feeling now. comes to potentially drifting off to sleep, which may be the reason you're listening. I also feel drowsy when I make these recordings. I also notice my mind drifting. In fact, at times, I've actually fallen asleep. Without even noticing. And then I carry on talking. It's only when I listen back to do the editing, I hear snoring. And I think, I don't remember snoring. I remember talking. Is snoring or is a pig turned up? That's what I sound like when I snore. And 
I can breathe into the whole experience. I don't know how you feel. How relaxed you feel in your feet. How relaxed you feel in your hands. I have noticed more and more that the more relaxed deeper level of comfort you feel the easier your breathing becomes It's almost like that additional muscle relaxation. This allows you to breathe easier. without necessarily focusing on your breath. However, being able to notice ease in which you breathe so naturally Breathe so very easily and smoothly. Whenever I imagine my breathing improving, when I've got my eyes closed, I tend to Visualize a beautiful field with trees and flowers. Producing all that life-giving oxygen. Feels nice. To, if nothing else, just taking some time on 
เอาไว้ from everything enjoying that feeling of peace, serenity. With a joyful heart, time seems to just. Drip by so very slowly. Completely unattached to any thoughts whatsoever. In this moment, completely free. Noticing that your mind has slowed down. Because nothing really requires your attention. You can enjoy. physical sensations of allowing the stress to drip out of your body. Drip in out of every part
of your body. muscles in your legs relax relax Pleasant feelings in your arms and shoulders. Deepen in each part of your body. Further and deeper and deeper. in the feelings in the back of your neck feelings in your wrists, Muscles in the front of your body, are also feeling. Peaceful. 
deeply. There's a sense of peace spreads through your very core. Even when you focus on your mind, the mind becomes even slower. slow your stomach Peaceful in your stomach. Your back. Notice how relaxed you now feel. spine, from your brain all the way down the middle of your back, sending and receiving millions of messages every day.
deeply relaxed. in those signals down your spinal cord into every part of your body your shins and your calf muscles Feelings of peace and tranquility spreading through your body, tips of your toes to your eyes. Just wandering away. Happy to let go. Let go. Completely. Let go. So tranquil, your whole body. 
joy and a sense of go even more Joy. The space. This space. Of peace. And safety. Letting go. Maybe we can just 
focus on the different parts of your body, just to notice forehead and your eyes. in a sense of complete freedom. Absolute freedom. Peaceful energy.
not have noticed. Your mind drifting. Peaceful. Blissful peace. Blissful peace. Total peace, Letting go. body
body feels almost invisible. And you could start to notice that you are feeling more relaxed. Even though I've not purposely focused your mind upon that sense of physical comfort that is growing within you throughout your body. And your mind starts to slow down. And that could be almost in recognition of, I guess, my speech not being particularly fast. And things just generally feel calmer just by listening to my voice. You give yourself a, an opportunity to take a break from the day. Take a break from your life as it is. And to give yourself a rest giving yourself permission to take some time off and to allow your body to relax and allow your mind to slow down which in turn releases the tension any stresses that you had in your body It's almost as if the parts of your body just open up, allowing the negativity out. And at the same time, replacing that negativity with positive, healing energy, which then fills your body up and your mind to also starts to appreciate those feelings of increasing confidence and an almost uplifting feeling positive healing an energy that spreads through your body like a wave of color. 
comfort. And all this comes from just allowing yourself a few minutes, maybe half an hour, however long you want it to be, to just rest. And allow your mind and your body to almost reset itself to the, to the settings of comfort and relaxation, calmness, which allows more room for feelings of pleasure and happiness to move around your body and into your mind, almost as if your mind and your body are sinking together, almost mirroring each other with that growing positivity and calmness and it feels nice it really does feel nice to know that you are the one that has allowed yourself to feel more comfort to experience more of this deep relaxation spreading throughout your body. And as I focus on each part of your body you can notice that that part becomes even more relaxed just by focusing on it becomes even more calm and comfortable just by focusing And as I move down your body, starting at your head, the parts that you've already focused on will continue to relax deeply. And those parts that we've not yet focused on will just automatically Release any remaining tension in anticipation of even more comfort about to come. Now, I'm going to start by focusing on your forehead. Just being aware of the feelings of your forehead. And any background sounds, like Mr. Herbert the Pigeon, can just allow you to feel even more relaxed. It just means you're in the moment. This isn't, this isn't a sterile environment. This is the world. I live in the countryside. So there's lots of nature sounds around. So as you focus on your forehead, just notice how it becomes even 
more relaxed as you focus only on my voice and that part of your body. Moving down to your eyes, focusing on your eyes, noticing eyelids feel so heavy, yet so light at the same time, and all the muscles around your eyes relaxing completely, moving your focus down to your mouth, your lips, your tongue, your teeth and your gums, and the whole of your mouth relaxing, calm and loose, as you focus now on your jaw, not just the part of your jaw near your mouth, your chin, but all the way up the sides of your face to your ears, that whole of your jaw, feeling more relaxed and calm. in on your neck, the front of your neck and your throat, relaxing and loose and calm, the sides of your neck, the right and left side of your neck. Focusing on the back of your neck, letting go of any tension that may have been there before, and enjoying that sense of increasing comfort and release. experience in the back of your neck, moving down your back, moving either side of your spine, right from the top of your back, all the way down to the bottom of your back. down to your lower back, as you move up and down your spine, you can feel the muscles either side of your spine relaxing even more. As those muscles relax, that sense of comfort starts to spread outwards from your spine into both sides of your back, the top of your back, the middle and your lower back, and as you scan 
gently and slowly up and down your back as the muscles in the top of your back relax and become looser. The muscles in the middle of your back also seem to just almost divide from each other, separating and almost melting. And in your lower back, there seems to be an extra special feeling of comfort. spreads into your hips, so down your lower back and into your hips, into the area where your coccyx are, and into your buttocks, and all those muscles that spread in your lower back into your hip area, start to melt, start to really let go, and you know we're about to focus on your shoulders, your back and your spine. Continue to let go, continue to relax, so calmly, and as you focus on your shoulders, you may notice that they're already Feeling really loose. They're already feeling calm. And they're feeling. Those muscles that move from your neck into your shoulders. Feel so soft and gentle, so smooth. Feeling in your shoulders seems to spread deep into your shoulders. That sense of relaxation, not just traveling deeply into your muscles. Also relaxing the bones, and moving all the way to underneath your arms, relaxing that whole area between the tops of your shoulders and underneath your arms. healing and you feel so relaxed and comfortable in your shoulders which sends that deep healing message 
message. Into your arms. And you may feel almost as if your arms are not even there because they're so relaxed, so deeply relaxed. So sense of real peace it just seems to feel so familiar
fingertips. attention to the front of your body, so comfortable, Muscles in your thighs, your knees so relaxed. Muscles and your shins completely
start counting down now from 20 down to 1 you can imagine in a way it's like just walking down some steps and each step all 20 steps and each step represents a level of comfort Each step represents a deepening of that comfort. And the further you, you walk down those steps, the deeper and more relaxed you feel. So, starting with number 20. Eighteen. Seventeen.
pain. Fourteen.
as you focus on your eyes. I'm going to count down from ten down to one. Focus in just on your eyes. Your eyelids, the muscles around your eyes, your eyeballs themselves, the whole area that makes up your eye. And as we count down from ten, down to one, whilst focusing on your eyes, you will become twice as relaxed with each number counting down, and you may find do is just drift off to sleep and if that's what you want then just allow yourself to do that now focus in on your eyes to begin counting down from ten down to one right now ten
So counting down from ten to one, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. Three, two, one. And maybe that was a bit too quick in order to relax. Maybe it's a bit too fast for you to notice the calming of your body. Maybe even a little bit of pressure there like you're counting down from 10 to 1 what do you expect me to do man you expect me just to go all floppy just because you're counting down you could try it again but this time I'll go a bit slower this time and you focus on the whole of your body before we focus on your legs. Just notice how your body does start to feel more relaxed with every number that I count down. Ten. Eight, seven, six, five. Four, 
and just notice how how you feel generally, how your body feels. It's not necessarily even about counting down from 10 to 1. It's that space that you have, that space between being active physically or mentally to just sitting or lying down and just being there not doing anything not saying anything not needing to think about anything so it, op it opens up a space you know a bit of a space a gap And the more I count down from 10 to 1, the bigger that gap becomes. So there's that gap of calmness, of comfort, of relaxation. It's a nice feeling. And it moves those stresses or discomforts physically or emotionally, moves them away. Allows you to just slow down. So I'm going to count again from 10 down to 1 and notice that gap widening. The gap. And as it widens, it's almost like the, the stress and the tension falls into the gap. gives you that distance, that space, now, 10, 9, 7, 6, 3 
how does your body feel now? Can you notice the, that you're feeling calmer? Feeling more relaxed. As we now focus on the legs. Just your legs. We're just going to start with focusing on your thighs. course it's not the most exciting thing to be doing because I'm, I'm sure like most of your body there's not a lot going on right now just focusing on the whole of your thighs the tops of your thighs the sides of your thighs, the bottoms of your thighs, your outer thighs and your inner thighs. Basically the whole of your thigh that leads into your hip and then goes down to your knee joints. Now this is a big area, it's a very heavy area, it's very strong, probably the strongest muscles in your body are in your thighs. But I don't think we, perhaps, give enough attention to our thighs. Perhaps we don't acknowledge how important our thighs are to our lives. How much they actually do for us all through our lives. And it may, it may seem sound really weird, but I think that all of our body parts, especially our thighs, need some. TLC, a bit of love shown, a bit of acknowledgement, a thank you, gratitude for what our thighs do for us. And I know this may sound a bit strange. Maybe you think, why am I? Surely I should be out in, in the garden hugging a tree or something. Or 
it's hard to set a microphone up on a tree. That's why I'm doing this indoors, otherwise I would be outside hugging a tree. No, I can't see the television from the tree. You move down to your knees, gain such an important part. And I think we don't necessarily, I'll speak for myself here, I don't necessarily appreciate all that my knees do for me until I have a problem with my knee. So occasionally if I have a, maybe I bash it or it's aching for some reason, it's then that I realise how much it does. You know, the benefit of being able to use my legs without any kind of physical discomfort is a beautiful thing that's possibly not appreciated until it's temporarily removed, you know, that comfort. But as you focus on your knees, regardless of how your knees feel, you can have that sense of gratitude and love to your knees for all that they do for you. And you can still have that attention on your thighs. Maybe notice how your thighs feel. Maybe you've noticed that they are relaxing more deeply. As you focus now on the bottoms of your legs, your shins and your calf muscles, and the bones between your knees and your feet. Incorporating, of course, your ankles. So important. You know, anyone that's had even the, like the slightest sprain of an ankle knows how, how much we take our ankles for granted. And it's kind of strange in a way when you think that, you know, logically our wrists are a lot thinner than the rest of our arms, which is, okay, doesn't, can't see any problem with that, because we're just picking stuff up. But our ankles are so much thinner than the rest of our legs. And from a physics perspective, or logical even, it doesn't really make sense that all this weight would ultimately be resting on your ankles, then leading to your feet. That thin area, thin bone. Yet it does so much great work. Supports us, supports our body for a lifetime. Helps us to balance. Helps you to get around and be mobile. There's the calf muscles, of course. When I was younger, I couldn't see the point in calf muscles. They didn't seem to do anything. I was okay. If I walked around on tiptoes, then my calf muscles get some work. 
but of course that's not true. The calf muscles are being used whenever we use our legs. And your shins, there to protect your lower legs. Shaped in a way, almost as a protector for the bone. Leading, of course, to your ankles and your feet. But we're not going to focus on your feet, we're just going to focus on the legs. I realize that now that I've mentioned your feet, you're probably focusing on them anyway. So maybe I should focus on your feet a little bit. can have them in your awareness, the same as you have your thighs in your awareness, even though we haven't been focusing on your thighs for a few minutes, we've been focusing on your ankles, there's still that sensation of comfort, in your thighs almost that movement of energy because the thighs hold lots of different sensations of course there's the muscles the big strong muscles that we have in our thighs But the skin on the outside of the thighs, as in the outside of all of our body, can be very sensitive. Sensitive to the touch. Sensitive to temperature. And inside your thighs bones, there's the muscle, there's the blood vessels, the arteries, there's all this stuff that's inside your thighs. And I guess sometimes it'd be nice if you could actually put your fingers inside your thighs and massage. So you can massage on the outside, of course. But to be able to get deep into the muscles, to be able to just massage inside your thighs, massaging the bones of your leg, massaging all the veins and just gently healing your thighs. And you could move down massaging inside your knees, just massaging those bones, but with healing fingertips, spreading that healing energy deep into the joints of your knees, and of course there's the back of your, your knee, you know the inside crease where your knee is. It's a very sensitive area. Very feels very nice when you stroke it. That might be because it's an area that's not really touched very often. It's almost like a hidden part, that crease in your legs. It's almost it's like a part that has a, a sensitivity which is a little bit different. Of course it's protected by your legs. So 
You can imagine putting your fingers into that crease in your legs. That fold in between your legs. You can just massage with your fingertips. Imagine the fingertips going inside, massaging the muscle tissue. You can of course feel the, the bones of your knees heaving through your fingertips. And then as you go down to your calf muscles, now that's a part I'd like to be able to really put my fingertips deep inside my calf muscles massaging every single tissue of that muscle, healing every part. And then doing the same for my shins, massaging and gently stroking the bones, gently stroking them healing in a loving way because they deserve to be treated as the precious bones that they are because our legs are so precious as in all the other parts of our body they're more precious than any jewel on the planet And when you start to think about your legs in this way, it can change your perspective. It might sound a bit, a bit silly to start with, the idea of having love for your legs showing appreciation for your thighs wanting to be able to put your hands in your thighs and massage the muscles in the bones and to get your fingers deep in there releasing all tension just to show how much you care about your legs, how much you care for what your legs do for you regularly. Your knees, your calves, your ankles. The strength of your ankles, considering how thin they are compared to the rest of your legs, especially your thighs. Yet they're so strong, so flexible, absolutely amazing things your ankles are. Truly a gift because of what they do for you. Supporting all that weight, regardless of how what weight you are, even if you're only eight stone, still a lot of weight, these little ankles. Now I'm a lot heavier than eight stone. Double that. Yet my ankles support my body all the time. Although they do give off a sigh of relief when I sit down. As in fact my whole legs do. My feet, feet also go. Whew, my toes clap 
and so happy. And I know that talk, uh, talking about your legs is probably possibly the, among the most in, most boring things you've ever heard anyone say, possibly. But boring or not, everything I said is true. Your legs are amazing. Your legs deserve not just respect. They deserve to relax deeply. They deserve to take some time out of the day to just let go completely. Because the legs are so, such a most, you know, very important part of your body, when you relax your legs, the rest of your body also naturally follows in that journey of comfort. feel it in my hips. My hips feel really loose. And also my lower back as well. My lower back really feels, it feels stretched, even though I'm just sitting in a chair and there's no stretching as far as I'm aware that I'm doing. It's almost as if the muscles have just relaxed so much that there is a natural stretch as the tension has reduced a lot. down from 10 down to 1 and you can continue to feel wonderfully relaxed 10 9 8 7 So I'm just going to count down from five down to one. And as I count down, if you just focus on the numbers, just the numbers, counting down, and notice how 
you feel in this moment as you hear the numbers counting down knowing that those numbers counting down represent you feeling calmer not just in your body but also relaxing your mind and just notice how you feel there's nothing to do there's nothing to say there's nothing to think about starting with number five Three, two. As you notice the gradual letting go of the tension in your body, you may also begin to notice and be aware of how your mind is starting to slow down. This is just a natural thing that happens. It's not really a special procedure. It's just natural because as your body relaxes, your mind also starts to relax. And the more your mind relaxes, the more your body relaxes. It's just a continuous circle of relaxation. And there's that calmness that comes from relative quietness. You know, even even if there's background sounds, either your side or mine, it's still going to be quite calm. You know, you haven't got the television on, there's no music in the background unless you're listening to the recording with music of course you're very likely not going to be sitting in a room with other people of course you might be but generally it's more ideal if you can do this on your own so no distractions And when you stop thinking about stuff, relaxation automatically rises, a sense of comfort starts to grow. And without trying to build it up into something fantastical or something magical this is just a natural process something that's easy to accomplish in fact it's almost you know the sense of relaxing completely happens really when you put no effort into it. It's not something that you can really force. It's something that happens naturally. And part of the process of this recording and others is simply to allow you 
to take advantage of this space, this time, to just let go, to just be here, to be in tune with how you feel. Yet with the intention of wanting to relax deeply. And maybe even to fall asleep. Depending on what it is that you wish for yourself in this moment. As we know, relaxing is the majority of the process of falling asleep. The actual falling asleep part is the tiny bit at the end. The deeper relaxed you become, the easier you find yourself drifting. You can also, if you choose, stay focused on my voice and really enjoy process of gradually relaxing each muscle in your body. Effortlessly Just observing the sensation of letting go. your mind calming down more with each number that you hear me say naturally feeling calm and slow and peaceful
two. slowed right down, sinking deeply into relaxation. As you focus on your mind, you may notice that there are some thoughts still there, maybe some stubborn thoughts that for some reason perhaps need your attention. can do is send love to those thoughts, sprinkle those thoughts with love, like little petals from a flower, just sprinkle it over them, petals filled with love towards those thoughts, to let those thoughts know that you're not abandoning them, you just need them, you require them to just calm down, slow down, quiet down. as you focus on those remaining thoughts, as we count down this time from seven down to one, with each number, just imagine sprinkling those flower petals of love, kindness, gratitude, over those thoughts, which will allow them to just melt away and relax deeply with every number. Those thoughts will become more in with number seven.
as you now notice how relaxed you're feeling in your body. We're going to focus on your hands. Because the more relaxed your hands are, the more relaxed your body and mind are. you focus on your hands and your fingers. There's nothing needed to be done. There's no clenching of fists or tensing the fingers or anything like that. It's just noticing focusing on your hands. Noticing how they feel. Because the more your hands feel, the calmer your mind feels, and the more comfort you feel throughout your body. that your mind is starting to drift. just on your hands and fingers, allowing them to experience a real deepening of that relaxation in your hands and fingers. number from eight down to one. You can almost feel that healing and relaxing energy spreading into your head.
starting with number eight. Seven. Just being here now. Nothing to think about. Nothing to do. Nothing to say. Everything just feels calmer. This is your natural state of being. This is how you just normally feel when you take away all of that other stuff that we add. You know, things like stress and worrying and overthinking and anxiety. Generally thinking about stuff. 
we take that away, which is what we do, what we're doing now, we're left with a real sense of peacefulness, which comes through very quickly. Because ultimately, it's just a feeling. A feeling of comfort. It's almost as if you've gone inside yourself and you've found a special place where everything is peaceful. place where you can feel relaxed and your natural sense of comfort, a place where you can be you, where you can accept yourself for who you are, a place where you're not trying to please anybody else, ever, a place where you can actually not just love yourself, but in some ways more importantly, you can like yourself, appreciate who you are. sense of gratitude is in the air all around you. And it's also a place where you can actually feel the healing energy soaking into your body. soaking into your body and that healing energy spreads through your veins traveling to each and every single part of your body start to realize that actually that healing energy has not just entered into your brain, it's become part of your brain. And that spinal fluid is now mixed with healing energy. Not just allowing you to feel so much more relaxed and healthy in this moment, but also you start to realize that actually what's happening now with that healing relaxing energy spreading through your body is actually changing your life. It's actually changing the way you're going to feel, not just now, but tomorrow and the next day as your health improves. Not just your physical health, but your mental health. Things that used to bother you in the past, for some reason, no longer 
have the effect that they used to. Because something has changed deep within you. Maybe things that used to cause you to feel anger no longer have that power to control you the way they seem to be able to before. As you realize that you are the one who decides what affects you. You're the one who decides to feel relaxed and calm when you choose to enjoy Noticing these natural developments of healing, continuing to grow and improve your life day by day. Including, of course, your ability to relax so much easier and sleep in is the most natural thing in the world to you because falling asleep is something that you've done so many times in your life and you know that you were born as we all were with the ability to fall asleep naturally we were born with that ability to just drift off into a deep healing sleep. Even when we're kids, sometimes we'll fall asleep when we don't even want to. We try to even stay awake. Maybe it's a birthday in the morning or it's Christmas or holiday or something we look forward to. We don't want to go to sleep. The more we want to stay awake, the more we just start to drift. And the more you fight drifting, the more you try and stop yourself from drifting asleep, the deeper and stronger that drifting becomes. Because we're born not just with the need to relax deeply and to naturally fall asleep, but it's our birthright. It's part of our DNA. And sometimes as we get older in life, Perhaps at times we have forgotten that relaxing completely is not only a wonderfully pleasant experience, it's also really easy. very, very easy. 
easy to let go because that's all it is, it's just deciding to let go. When you press the play button on my recordings, you have given permission for my voice to relax you. When you press that play button, you have given me permission for my words to affect positive, only a positive way, opening up your mind to useful and healing suggestions. such an amazing effect on how you feel right now, as well as those changes that continue long after the recording ends, those changes within you. Continue to flourish and grow. Transforming your life in a positive, beautiful way. Allowing you to move forward in your life in the direction that you choose yourself. And this feeling, this feeling that you can experience of safety, comfort, calmness, This feels so nice. It's such a healthy place to be. And that positivity grows within you. to find that you're more relaxed physically and in your mind is more relaxed. And it's not that you're thinking slower. It's just that your mind will be less clogged up with unnecessary negativity. Because from now on, your mind rejects negativity. From now on, you're going to start noticing when negativity arises. You can just say stop. Stop. And that negativity will turn around and leave you alone. Stop. 
と、and that negativity would disappear. As you notice that you feel way more relaxed than you probably expected, you can now congratulate yourself because you're the person that has done this. You. Are the one that has opened your mind up to the simple facts that you can feel more relaxed in your body and in your mind. You've opened your mind up to the birthright of being able to just. Fall asleep easily when you choose. And that's a nice feeling, don't you think? Feels nice, doesn't it? To feel calm with all that heat. Healing energy spreading through your body and your mind. To spend time in that that special place where negativity can no longer enter. Negativity is banned. It's barred. It's not allowed entry. Doesn't it? Doesn't this? Des- doesn't deserve to be here? Doesn't belong here. Negativity has no place in your life. Makes room for more comfort, more healing, more relaxation, more peace. Feels nice, doesn't it? To just let go of everything. And I'm going to count down now from twenty down to one. Continue to relax. If you choose, you can drift to sleep with every number you hear me say. You can feel twice as relaxed. Or if you choose, you can feel twice as sleepy. Now, twenty. Eight. 
fifteen. This is your time to just take a break. Your time to relax, to allow your mind to slow down. to give yourself permission to take a break from everything and you're the only person that can make that decision you're the only person that can actually tell your mind Just relax. To just take some time off. So that you can focus on your body getting in touch with you feel physically and in the process of this body scan where you focus on different parts of your body those parts that you focus on and observe even though you're not purposely requesting for those parts of your body to relax it's kind of expected you expect when you listen to my voice to feel 
more relaxed naturally. Because when you're listening to me, your attention is focused on my words. And as my words guide you to focus on those parts of your body, your focus increases. which actually calms your mind. And when your mind calms down, your body relaxes. And even though you've not really started the focus on your body, you can already feel that healing energy spreading through your body. Pushing out stress and tension, healing all the parts of your body, including your skin, your bones, your blood, all of your organs inside your body, all of the muscles all of the fat, all of everything, every hair on your body is filled with that healing energy. And your brain is filled with that healing energy. feeling of comfort, of relaxation, increases. Deeply increases. In a way that starts to feel perhaps a bit drowsy, because it's not needed, and that you may start to drift, That's what's needed. So if you're listening to this and what you need is deep relaxation, that's what you'll get. If what you need is to fall asleep naturally and easily as your mind drifts, that's also will happen. Because by 
pressing that play button on the podcast and listening to me, I give permission for your body and your mind. In fact, I give the command to your body and As I focus on the different parts of your body, you may start to just drift, and when you come back again, and you hear me talking, and I'm focusing on a different part. yourself drifting, but you don't realize you're drifting until you stop drifting, and you get you alert again to my voice, focusing on a different part of your body, starts to relax even deeper, because that drifting Basically, you already in the sleep zone. And the more you drift, the longer you drift, and the longer you drift, and eventually that drifting continues into sleep. the last you remember until you wake up in your own time when you experience the right amount of sleep for you because when you do and if you do fall asleep so nice to relax into your own body and mind as you feel that healing energy spreading through you relaxing you so deeply relaxing you so
Let's focus again on parts of your body. Focusing this time on your forehead. Now on your mouth, your lips, your tongue, the whole of your mouth. Focusing on your fingers, maybe you could move your fingers a little bit so you can focus on each one individually. you focus on both of your hands now, they almost seem to just melt into one. Where does your right hand start and your left hand end? Almost as if they just mix together. Focusing on your knees, just noticing how your knees feel. Now focusing on your elbow. Focusing in on both of your elbows. Just observing the feeling of your elbows.
noticing how your entire body feels. Noticing. Letting go. Letting go. Letting. Letting go. Letting go. Letting go. I'm going to start now and I'd like you just first of all just to see yourself lying down on that massage table, lying on your front, your head is supported, your arms are supported and you feel comfortable and the breathing is really easy and you feel You feel confident in how you look as well. So there's none of that issue of body problems or shyness because I'm a professional and this is a therapy session. So none of that stuff matters whatsoever. This is about you. This is about how you feel and how you can enjoy that sense of comfort and relaxation that comes from letting go and allowing my hands and my fingers to relax you by massaging your body. So I want to start off just by placing my hands on the back of your head, just gently, just so you can feel what my hands feel like really on you, so you can maybe feel the warmth of my hands on the back of your head, and with my hands to the side of your head, not pressing but just Holding there very gently. Maybe over your ears and a little bit on your face. Just so you can feel my hands. So you can become accustomed to them. And now I'll put my hands on the back of your head again. And gently... Let them slide down onto the back of your neck. And 
you can feel my hands. Gently stroking the back of your neck to start with. Just so you can get used to the the feeling of my hands on your skin. Get accustomed to it. Realize that you're safe and it's all good. It's all fine. And I'm going to start gently massaging the muscles in the back of your neck. both hands. Now this is a very trusting situation really because our necks are so fragile and to have someone have their hands around your neck in that way can sometimes be problematic for people which is why massages are quite good because it allows you to relax and to get in touch with trust to feel peaceful and calm and as I massage the sides of your neck gently Moving from the bottom of your neck, which would be sort of near where your shoulders start, I guess, all the way up to your jaw, your ears kind of area, that side of your neck. Of course, is a lot longer than the front of your neck. in the, the back of your neck especially that area where perhaps we hold tension and as that area is massaged you can actually feel a sense of release in the back of your neck and maybe you can breathe it out as well Notice how it feels. Notice how you feel. Then moving down to that area between your neck and your shoulders. That muscly area. Starting to massage that area on both sides. I mean, this would be the area that a lot of people would massage if they were going to give you like a shoulder massage. Even that's not technically the shoulders, but it's all the muscles that lead to the shoulders. From the neck. And again, that can hold tension and stress. And when massaged, sometimes a nice deep massage is useful. And you decide how deep that massage is. And just allow my knuckles just to dig in to get to those muscles and to really relax them. All the time being firm yet gentle with you. And just stroking down that area to your actual shoulders. 
move into the muscles of your shoulders. And maybe initially just pulling up the shoulders a little bit off the table, just to give you a little bit of a stretch, but very gently. And you've got the muscles at the front of your shoulders, the sides, the back. This is a part that can really take quite a bit of pressure, quite a bit of uh, kneading, if if you wish, to really release the tension, to really get into those muscles and let your fingers in there, and make you feel really nice. Sometimes it's just being stroked gently or being massaged quite strongly. It can all be beneficial to the relaxation. Of the muscles in your shoulders. Now to move down your arms. We'll do one arm at a time, starting with your right arm. And what I'll do is I'll just lift your arm up, just hold it to the side of you. I want it to still be attached. And I just massage the tops of your arms. All the way down to your forearms, into your wrists. Gently massaging that part, the softer part, which is the under part of the arm, which leads to the crease in your elbow, the inside. It's much more sensitive skin. Sometimes just having that stroked can feel really nice, pleasurable and relaxing. Now moving down to your right hand. Holding your hand with both of my hands, just pressing gently on the back of your hand and stretching your fingers ever so lightly at the same time. Pressing down and massaging each finger. And then starting to massage the palms of your hands. Just turning the hand gently. Stretching it gently. Actually having your hand held can really be an emotional 
emotional experience sometimes, even if it is with a stranger, someone you don't know very well, like a massage person or a therapist maybe, because it's intimate. safe and as I put that right arm back down where it was and then do the same with your left arm exactly the same Massaging the muscles in your arm all the way down to your wrist. Stroking the inside of your arm. Just being gentle or as firm as you require. Massaging your left hand. Stretching the fingers gently. Massaging the palm of your left hand. So comforting. Now just rest your left arm back down. And start to massage your back biggest part of your body, starting at the top, starting again where we would have been, that area at the top in between your shoulders, and then your neck, going back, massaging that area again, but this time moving downwards. downward stroke to the middle of your back, working from the outside inwards, so massaging the, your back but the, the outsides of your back, the parts where your arms would maybe rest against, almost the part that connects your front to your back, and just massaging down firmly but gently as firm as you want, moving down and then moving across a little bit and moving all the way down again, being very gentle, yet firm as you choose. Eventually we get to the spine. You can massage the muscles on either side of your spine from the top of your neck all the way down to your lower back. You can 
do that a few times. Sometimes people use the knuckle or the, you know, two fingers and just go either side of the spine. Almost just push down, go all the way down to the bottom of the spine. Each time releasing tension and opening up the body, stretching your body so that you feel more relaxed but at the same time rejuvenated. to one side, to your right side, and from the bottom of your ribs to your pelvis, you're going to massage that area of your back, I'll stretch over the other side and I'll pull the muscles gently and massage and push from one end that side all the way to my side, or to the middle in fact, to where your spine is, massaging that side of your spine, the opposite side to where I'm standing, it's almost like kneading bread, there's that big area which is firm, yet lots there to massage, Potentially one of the most important places to actually have a massage because you really feel it. You really feel the release and the pleasure of having your lower back massaged. It releases so much from your body that's not useful. Starting a healing process which will continue long after this recording is over. And massaging this part of your body not only feels really good for you, but it's actually fun to do because it is, as I said, like kneading bread. It's a part that you can really get a hold of and really massage deeply if that's your choice. And then I'm going to move over to the other side of your body and do the same with the opposite part of your lower back kneading and massaging from your sides all the way to the middle of your back where your spine is. Pressing and kneading. Firm and gentle at the same time. It feels so releasing. This mixture of pleasure, comfort, release, calmness, relaxation, all mixed together. Plus there's that feeling from your stomach as it's being stretched. Even though you're in your stomach now, you can feel it being stretched because that whole area is connected to your stomach. And now we're going to move, we'll move further up to your top of your body and I'm going to do the same. This time, starting 
with the upper back, put my hands forward over and massage in that area up to your spine, from the side of your body up to your spine. So some of that massage area, the muscle tissue, uh, or whatever, fatty tissue even, will be possibly from your chest. So it's all connected, the chest and the back connect together. I'm going to be massaging and just pulling some of that skin from your side up and massaging that area of your upper back all the way to your spine. And then I'll move down a bit and I'll continue with the middle of your back doing exactly the same thing. As gentle or as deep as you choose. Now I'll move off the other side again and do the exact same thing with the top of your back on the other side from pretty much underneath your arm area really to your spine and then continuing that all the way down Including your lower, your middle of your back. Now I'm going to go to your thighs, the backs of your thighs, and the sides of your thighs. Starting with your right leg, massaging the back and the sides of your thighs, gently and firmly. There's a lot of muscles there. It's an area that can be very tense at times and maybe needs a little bit more pressure than the rest of the body. That's up to you. You can gently stroke the back of your legs where, you know, opposite your knee joint or underneath your knee joint. It's a very sensitive, gentle area. And working down to your calf muscles, massaging your calf muscles thoroughly and deeply if you choose, using both hands and fingers digging deep. your ankles and the back of your back of your ankles just gently massage in that area maybe lifting the leg and stretching it a little bit Moving to the right foot. Massaging the bottom of your feet and the sides of your feet.
gently but firm enough so they don't tickle. And just allow the pleasure that you get from having your feet massaged to just overtake you. As I continue to massage your feet, the bottoms of your feet, the sides, your arches, your heel, you can put a lot of pressure into your heel and it feels amazing, yet the arches need to be a bit more gentle. Stretching your toes gently and massaging the bottoms of your toes with my fingers, each one individually. And moving over to the left leg to do exactly the same thing. Starting with the top of the thighs, working the back of the thighs and the sides, massaging deeply and gently that whole area, working all the way down. This is an area that maybe you could like to spend more time relaxing and massaging. So perhaps if you wanted I could make a future recording where I spend more time on one particular area. As you move down your calf muscles, massaging your calf muscles firmly and gently, moving down your ankle into your feet, massaging backs of your feet, bottoms of your feet, stretching your toes and massaging each toe individually, and that feeling of pleasure and release that you experience while you're having your feet massaged, feels really good. Turn over in your mind, laying on your back. I'm just going to start again with your neck area. And your shoulders. Just to Get back in touch with that area. As we move up. I can clean my hands. Make them all fresh. Because now I'm going to massage your face. Gently. Starting off with your forehead, if your eyes are closed and you can just stretch your eyes a little bit, pushing up on your eyebrows. And 
just massaging around your scalp. Massaging down your cheeks, around your ears, into your jaw, gently. The sides of your neck, chin. moving down from your neck down to your chest, starting by massaging the very top of your chest, where the collarbone is, either side of the collarbone. Just massaging the whole of the chest. Moving the chest around. It gives us quite a large area. You can move from one side to the next. Moving my hands underneath pretty much where your arms are, stretching up, stretching some of the muscles of your back in the process, moving up over your chest. Just massage gently and slide down towards your stomach, starting in the middle of your chest. And then gradually my hands moving apart and massaging and sliding at the same time, moving down. Just below your rib cage. Moving down and massaging up again. Giving your chest all the attention that it needs to feel completely relaxed. So we're going to be focusing on your sides as well, an area that really doesn't get much attention, but feels really good when it's massaged. Just stroking my hands down the sides of your body, or just below your arms. All the way down to your hips. Now moving to your stomach area. I'm going to stand one side of you like I did when I did your lower back. And we're going to do a similar process of just stretching the muscles from your side, gently massaging from one side to the next, moving that whole area from below your ribs all the way down to 
blow your belly button. And then move round to the other side of you and repeat that. Process of relaxing deeply. You feel free. There's something about having your stomach massaged that's different from any other part. Because we do have a tendency of holding a different kind of stress in our stomachs that we may not be aware of. And now massage your stomach, the front of your stomach, making circles around your belly button. Then going the other way around. There's a gentleness and a freedom that comes from feeling how you're feeling. And as I now move down the tops of your thighs, the muscles massaging them, and I can do this with two legs at the same time, pressing down, massaging deeply, those muscles in your thighs, the front of your thighs. Moving down to your knees, gently massaging your knees. Sliding down your shins, put the pressure on either side of your shin, gently Softly, but firmly. Moving down to your ankles. Stroking the tops of your feet. And then with each foot in each hand, just gently massaging whole of the foot, the top, the bottom, your heel, your ankle, your toes, massaging every part of your feet, feels so good just to let go, enjoy the process. Enjoy feeling so deeply relaxed. So much comfort and so many feelings that come just from touching your skin. can just lie there for as long as you choose, enjoying the feeling of deep comfort from being massaged. going to 
do is blow out some candles in your mind. There are going to be a hundred candles. You're going to blow each one out individually, one by one, starting at a hundred as I count down. All the way down to one. And each time I say a number. can imagine that candle in front of you and I'd like you to actually physically gently blow that candle out just so it's not a big Below, it's just a gentle, and that candle will extinguish, and then I'll say the next number as we move down, and you can just blow that one out as well. As we move down the numbers, you'll find yourself feeling more and more relaxed. If you need to sleep, you also find yourself becoming incredibly tired and sleepy. In fact, you may struggle to blow out all 100 of these candles. As you feel listening to me after a while and even though there may be background sounds where you are you be aware of those sounds at the moment Just not even notice them at all because they're unimportant. Where I am, I've got the sounds of the birds. Honest the pigeon. It's like 
likes to say hello sometimes. And as your plane goes by, there'll be traffic and trains in the distance. But none of that seems important whatsoever. you blow out, the less important anything is, the more candles you blow out, the further you seem to sounds and kind of general day-to-day -day stuff seems to just move away on its own. say and then you blow that candle out too so easy so simple going to start by introducing the first candle, which is a hundred. First candle, which is one hundred. a slight change in how you feel. As well as a real sense of positivity growing within you. Relaxation and sleepiness expanding starting with one hundred blow out that candle now.
26.
Sixty four can 
Window 67. Two. 
let go of all of those thoughts, worries, concerns about the past, thoughts about the future and even things you've been thinking about today. Just let it all go. Because none of it is useful in this moment. This is your opportunity to just focus on feeling relaxed, allowing yourself to get in touch with that natural sense of peace that we all have within us. It's available for everyone. It just sometimes takes a little bit of effort to set up the right time and place in order for you to just let go. Because when you do decide to let go and relax, that's what your body starts to do. Because you've chosen, you've chosen to just allow your body to unwind and your mind starts to slow down. And it's a nice feeling. It's a nice feeling at the beginning just to know that you have chosen to decide to, to relax deeply. And because you've made that decision, your body will just follow suit. Because sometimes all the muscles in your body need is just permission from you to relax. Because so often we're busy, we're going from here to there, we're walking around and we're doing stuff. And the body doesn't have any time or space to really relax deeply. So it kind of waits for you to lead the way. Waits for your permission. And when you do give your permission and you give the say so and you say, okay, it's time for your body to let go completely and relax totally. Your body just follows. It's all like a breath of relief. Oh, good, I can now relax. That feeling at the end of a day, of a very physical day that you may experience in the past, where you get home and you just sit down on a chair, maybe you kick your shoes off and, oh, it feels so nice. Knowing that you don't have to get up again a little while at least and if you choose you can just sit there for maybe an hour or two and it feels blissful and just by sitting down like that your body knows that it's time to relax your body has been given permission from you because it's a mindset where your mind, you're prepared to let go of everything and to just completely allow all of the stress of your body to evaporate. And when you 
tensions can just gradually vanish. It's almost like magic, really. Because that sense of relaxation in the body is a very natural state. It's not something unusual. It may feel unusual when you first start to relax if you if you haven't really spent a lot of time focusing and giving yourself this space to let go completely and relax. It may seem almost alien. But it isn't. It's actually the most natural thing in the world to let go completely, to relax totally. The most natural thing in the world to allow yourself to feel is almost like a literal unwinding. It's like you press a button and all the tension just releases. And it's like a wheel, like a cog, like the inside of the clock just unwinding. And it's almost like you could see the the little wind up knob that's used just going the opposite way that you would use to wind it up. The energy, that frenetic, stressful energy gradually winding down, losing its power, losing its strength as the sense of relaxation becomes stronger and deeper and you may find that the more relaxed you feel that your mind starts to wander maybe you seem to stop listening to me for a while and your mind goes somewhere else and then you realize you're listening to me again. And that was just your mind drifting to sleep. Which is quite natural. Because sometimes when we're stressed and tense, we not may not actually be aware of what we need. What we physically or emotionally need in this moment. But when you allow your body and mind to relax completely. And you let go of all thoughts, concerns, worries, ideas. All letting them go. Allowing them to drop onto the floor. start to get in touch with the feelings of such relaxation. It feels so nice to be in touch with the calmness of the different body parts as they become looser even the breathing seems easier and more natural and effortless as that cool air enters through your mouth or nose into your lungs breathing in comfort 
some relaxation. And then just breathing out any excess remaining tension and stress from every part of your body. As you start to focus on your mind, maybe you notice that things uh, have come to a standstill, or maybe just as much, much slower than before, because your mind is not really needed when listening to my voice. allows your mind to relax just as deeply as your body and that synchronicity between the relaxation of your body and the relaxation of your mind lets you know that feeling So many positive benefits for your body, your mind and your life to be able to let go of everything and to relax completely in all parts of your body. Even your bones are relaxed, all your muscles are relaxed, even the skin that covers your body is relaxed. Every starts to feel the benefit of this healing relaxation. And as you focus from the inside of your scalp where your brain is, you can start to realize and notice to relax and sends those messages to the rest of your body and your mind to really relax even more deep because they're no longer necessary in this moment, in this moment of deep relaxation and calmness, filling your brain with deep, calm 
Ganzen gleichzeitig fliegen. Kommen. Relaxen. Every part of your body. ever increasing sensations of comfort that are spreading throughout your body, relaxing each and every muscle of your body. more deeper than 
do a body scan, focusing on firstly how you feel in your body, not trying to change how you feel, not trying to relax, not trying to move away from any discomfort or stress or tension, but just accepting, observing and accepting how you feel in the different parts of your body, just allowing yourself to be exactly as you are, to notice, to get in touch with how you actually feel in this moment. So we're going to start off by focusing on your hands. to move your hands around, just maybe move your fingers a little bit, opening and closing your hands very gently, just so that you can get in touch with how your hands and your fingers feel. Focusing now on your feet. And if you can, just do kind of an equivalent with your feet as you've just done with your hands. Maybe turning your ankles, moving your feet around, moving your toes gently. how your feet feel in this moment. Focusing now on your eyes. I'd like you to just focus on your eyelids. Maybe you can open and close your eyes a couple of times to really get in touch with how you feel when you do close your eyes. The muscle changes in your eyes when you do close them. Maybe raising your eyebrows which stretches the tops of your eyes. Perhaps squinting your eyes Crunching up your eyes, just so you can really get in touch with all aspects of how your eyes feel right now. Now focus in on your thighs, I'm going to just ask you to gently tense your thighs, just very, very gently, just enough so you can become more attuned to the physical sensation of your upper legs, the front of your thighs and the backs of your thighs, noticing and observing how your thighs feel right now. to the back of your neck, 
stops noticing the back of your neck, the muscles, and of course they lead to the side of your neck, they also lead to the top of your back, which lead to your shoulders, so as you focus on the back of your neck, maybe you can move your head gently upwards, as if you were looking up, maybe moving your head down, as if you were looking down, perhaps moving your head side to side, right to left, but only very slowly. force anything, it has to be very, very gentle, just so that you can be more in touch with the feelings, with the sensations, the physical sensations of how the back of your neck feels right now. As we now focus on the tops of your arms, the parts where your biceps and your triceps are, between your elbow and your shoulders, as you focus on those parts, the tops of your arms, you may like to just tense them, but very, very gently and slowly, so you're not straining or putting any whatsoever on your arms, it's just so that you can gain more of a sense of how your upper arms are feeling in this moment, and you're just noticing how the tops of your arms feel right now. And as we now focus on the stomach, the area, the lower abdomen area, Just above your groin. Maybe you're able to tense these muscles in that area very, very gently and slowly. If that is a difficult thing to do, then maybe you can just move your body, pushing your stomach up, maybe moving a little bit to the side, using your hips, just so that you can get more in tune with how Just noticing the feeling. 
physical sensations of your lower abdomen. And as you move your attention Noticing how your tongue and your mouth feels, and it may help by moving your tongue around your mouth, moving it to your left, maybe pressing it gently against the side of your mouth. side of your mouth, perhaps pressing up against the, the top of your mouth and then down gently against the bottom of your mouth, always very slowly and very, very gentle. Just rotate your wrists by moving your hands in a circular motion very gently and slowly, just so that you can feel sensations that you are currently experiencing in your wrists, perhaps moving your hands up and down, and again just above your hips, where your coccyx are, and the whole 
this area and it does include the sides of the body as those muscles are very much connected as those muscles also move into your hip area connecting to your buttocks the sides of your hips and if you're physically able to do so maybe you can fairly physical sensations of your lower back as you now move your attention just, if it's okay to do so, gently open your mouth, not wide and then stretching, just very gently and slowly opening your mouth and closing your chest area, you don't need to do anything to move your chest, it's just it moves every time you breathe, it moves very gently. 
those muscles and those bones in your midsection. Noticing how your hips feel right now. You can very, very gently move your hips. Everything starts to slow down. Including the thoughts in your mind and your mind itself just starts to gradually it doesn't have to be instant, but just gradually starting to, it's almost like time is stretching. It's a slower pace to maybe what you're used to in your day-to-day -day life. It's a slower movement of energy. Very small movements which make up the larger movements is always the case. And when you move your hand, it might seem like it's one movement, but it's lots of minute different muscles moving in accordance with each other. And what happens in this space that we're sharing is we move from that big movement into those smaller movements. Starting to focus on how your body feels, not just as a whole, not just, oh, I'm feeling this way, I'm feeling stressed or tense or I'm feeling relaxed and calm, I'm feeling this way, I'm feeling that way. starting to notice that your body be 
begins to present to you small feelings around your body. Small physical sensations in your legs, whether pleasurable or not. Maybe resisting the temptation to label them or to judge them, those feelings, and just thinking them, thinking about them as just being neutral, just feelings. particularly concerned but just noticing what your body is telling you the feelings in your arms instead of feeling the whole of the arm maybe notice those individual feelings, all those different muscles and the skin, the hairs of your arms, the, all the internal parts of your arms, the veins. Just being aware of maybe your elbow on your right arm has a certain feeling, maybe your left wrist also has its own individual physical sensation. about your forearm and your right arm. Your right forearm there may not be any particular feeling that you could even give a name to. It may not feel like anything other than just a feeling, you know, it's there. The feelings in your shoulders. Perhaps your shoulders, when you think about them, kind of almost like they're the same, you know, the same feeling. Almost like your, both of your shoulders are just one thing course they're not. And when you focus on your left shoulder and then on your right shoulder, maybe you find that you move the muscles a little bit, maybe tense the muscles gently. Noticing the difference in each shoulder. And your lower back. side of your lower back and the right side of your lower back. Of course, 
notice that connection to your buttocks and to your hips. And also moving up into the middle of the back. sometimes, like right now actually, when I focus on that part, when I focused on my buttocks, and then I focused on my, the middle of my back, it almost felt like the muscles in my lower back were being stretched, very gently, but just stretched a little bit. Even though I wasn't doing anything to try to stretch the lower back, it just seemed to happen. The feeling of very gently stretching your lower back. along that feeling in your chest just noticing what sensations you experiencing in your chest right now. And there's so much of the chest. Obviously there's the collarbone leading to the chest, but the chest bone. You've got the muscles in your chest and of course if you're female there's possibly the breasts if you're a male you've got the different well, I might not that different these days but there may be more muscles at the top of the chest But at the side, underneath, it's pretty much the same. Whether you're a man or a woman, there's muscles there. Muscles that stretch out to your back. As well as breast tissue which stretches and moves into your back. So just being aware of your chest. feeling there is in your chest. And when I notice that I focus on my chest, I feel it in my, my back, my upper back. I guess the obvious reason would be because, you know, I'm breathing. In. Then it stretches my chest and my back at the same time. Yeah, it feels... It feels okay. feel yeah, a little bit of pain in my right chest, a little bit, not pain, but a little discomfort, maybe stiffness possibly, 
I don't know. I notice my shoulders are also wanting to flex for some reason. I think that's probably part of my upper back. connection between my shoulders and my upper back so I can move my shoulders and stretch the muscles in my back moving the shoulders backwards or up which then moves the I think it's the scapulas in the back Feels quite nice actually. The good thing about this is you can, if you want to, you can just flex or stimulate the various muscles in your body gently order to get more of a sense of how they feel. And when you're relaxing, when you do tense a muscle, and then you let it go, and you let it relax, it relaxes to do that no point doing it if there's a uh, an issue with a per part of your body you need to be gentle with yourself at all times when you're relaxing deeply and simple noting yourself as you notice your mind how much has your mind slowed down since we started this recording Peaceful is your mind right now. With nothing to think about, and just my voice to listen to, because you know the intention behind this recording is relaxation. At the very least, for you to feel more relaxed at the end of the recording than you did at the beginning. At the very least. For your mind to slow down. As your body continues to relax. Because that's what you want to happen. That's what you expect. to fill your 
body. Maybe calm your mind to the point of boredom and start maybe to drift away. as if you are moving further away from the body and the mind, just leaving that there, kind of like in a, an escape pod in a spaceship, like a movie space movie, you know, when they get into that little pod and it sends them <laughs> far away from the spaceship. Safe, free, Focusing on the feeling of those individual parts of your body that are relaxing one by one. listening to my voice because your mind started to imagine something different maybe you started to almost move into some kind of a dream state Even though you may want 
space of comfort and safety. As you sense of peace spreads through your mind like a gentle breeze yet strong enough to blow away all negativity and stress that was there before. And blow away any other thoughts or feelings that just on your mind, you count down with me, 10 down to 1, and with each number you hear, your mind will be calm, see how it goes. Just a slight movement from nine down to eight. Just another small change in how you feel. Eight down to seven. That feeling is.
seven down to six. like there's a magnet outside of your head sucking the tension and the stress and all your remaining feelings that you don't want sucking it out through your skull Just emptiness, but space. A place full of fresh air. A place where you can stretch. It's almost as if as you go down to four and three, your mind is expanding with this sense of peace and tranquility, growth, so you move down to two, and when you get to one, your mind just feels exactly how you want to feel. Almost the perfect feeling. Maybe a, a sensation that you'd like to keep. A place that's safe. to create this space and this feeling of comfort within your own mind just by counting from ten down to one and this is something that you can do yourself just for a few minutes, close your eyes, just count slowly from ten down to one, and when you experience these feelings, Feel that one in your mind, your body copies your mind. And that feeling is spread through your spine and your nervous system.
yourself ten just notice be aware of how you feel in the mind and the body and when I say mind you can be to yourself necessary for you so you can affect what you feel when I say the numbers 10 here to you faster than I do and go ahead and do that and if you feel when I do it yourself then you're going to want to have more more space Recording. Unless you can choose. 
seeing how you physically feel. Having held down a pen too for long. Allowing the stress and tension to leave from your fingertips and your toes. And as you focus on your fingertips, maybe they feel a little bit tingly. This time, I want you to feel relief and tension and stress and anxiety that you might have. Breathing in through your stomach. Just breathing through your stomach, almost as if it's just releasing. Hold your stomach and your navel to the sort of like the feet of the lower back area. Just surrounding your lower back area for the whole hour. You can feel the tension of your body, what it is like to just release it in that moment. And you may notice that your stomach is often very relaxed. just do a little scan of your body just noticing what that looks like noticing how your upper body how your chest stomach legs are how you feel just noticing sense of tiredness 
Zorro or something. You know, if you're coming on, have a look at it now. Or so it looks to me. I'm focusing on that area. Because if that's the area that I need, then I'm going to need some chunks and some mud. Some grain and some more mud. And I need tension in my life to make me lean in the right place.
Thank you. 